And welcome to the Mazu. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Star Trek Adventures is back on board. On board. Mm, I can't talk today. On board the USS Mazu. Constellation is here. Welcome back, everybody. It's what day is it? Tuesday, I think. Yep. Something sure like that. I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, I think Tuesday. it's something like that. If it's not Tuesday. Tuesday, then it's kind of awkward that we're all here. <laughs> good point. Really good point. If we though, I will Tuesday. say that I'm confused enough on the day of the week that I was legitimately concerned that I was coming on the wrong day. <laughs> were you really? <laughs> well, we're also getting used to be, uh, what city we're in again. <laughs> so, well, yeah, y'all were in. Uh, we were in San Francisco. San Francisco. Sounds like the show went well. It went very well, yes. That's the whole cool. festival was a blast. Um, we tried to visit Starfleet while we were out there, but apparently they haven't built it yet. What the hell? So. Rude. Seriously. And it yeah. turns Get out on that, the Golden right. Gate Get Bridge is it. kind of far away from the other stuff, so. <laughs> so you didn't see the Golden Gate Bridge either? No, I mean, but like there was it. a lot of really good food because we were right around Chinatown, so like. So good. I will usually take food over a bridge. Right? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I, I take know. most things over a bridge. Hey! <laughs> and thank you for joining us. Good night, folks. <laughs> it's been great. Uh, let's get started with all the things. Um, first off, we are having. Well, let's let's knock this out of the way first. Uh, in case you didn't know, my name is Mark. I'm going to be the GM. Hello, over here to my left and at the top of the screen, we've got Barrett, Cindy, and Angie. And. Your theme song. <laughs> Jordan is it's a theme yours. song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twitch likes to advertise when you first sign on to it. <laughs> True story. True story. I was trying to get our. They got to make them dollars. Yes, they do. We don't apparently, but they got. To. Just oh, say. Oh, well, do. That's how they. That's how they do the things. Uh, over here to my right, at the bottom of the screen. Let's start at the bottom of the screen. Yes, we have Jordan. We have Kate and. We have Lauren. <gasps> what? What? Who is this? We have a new. We have a new culture. I know, right? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a week. So, yeah. <laughs> people can change in a week. Uh, but true. Lauren is going to be joining the crew of the Mazu. So welcome aboard, Lauren. Thank you. Um, we'll introduce her character in a little while, in a hot minute. So you guys will get to introduce her and uh, see what happens with her. What kind of wrench will she throw in the works? Who knows? We'll find out. Uh, before I go too much farther, I want to remind everybody that right now the pre-orders are going on for these awesome baseball t-shirts. It looks like, what does it look like that? Looks like that. Uh, these baseball t-shirts are pre-ordering right now. If you go to heroesofawesome.com slash shop, you can get one of them pre-order price at 25% off, $18. Uh, the money we make from that is going to go towards replacing some of the gear that is wearing out, like the microphone that Barrett's wearing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you may every once in a while hear Barrett not really be here. It's because his mic is going out. So if you want to help the stream and help us keep doing things, go ahead and uh, grab one of those shirts. That would be awesome. And even if you can't, it's cool you're here. Just share the show with all your friends and get more people to watch. And then we can get the green screen that Biscuit 606 thinks that we all deserve to have as well. well In which we Kate and wow. I both just simultaneously mm -hmm. responded to I, I it. Answered as, their mind. I answered as Jordan. <laughs> with, uh, it was surprisingly with clever. Which is all not the, the first time that's happened. <laughs> all the shirts. I actually thought about a green screen for the backdrop with you guys when we first started doing this. And then I shot it down. But who knows? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Brad thought of it too. Jordan would have to stop wearing green shirts though. Would have to stop wearing yeah, green shirts. I'll have to stop wearing green. We'll all have to stop wearing green shirts. <laughs> one time. One I time know, but it was the one time that you you were shooting in front of a green screen, which is why there is no introduction <laughs> to Cade in the YouTube videos. Cade needs no introduction. Oh, there you go. That video does Kate exist. Needs a lot of <laughs> <laughs> he needs a lot of. <laughs> to be clear, he does. He needs a lot of introduction. The big thing I have about the green screen, though, is like on the corners, there's so much shadow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What oh, size yeah. of sexy do the shirts come in, Mark? All sizes of sexy. Are you sexy? It comes in your size. Whoa. There you go. Should that Biscuit be my new ad? I'm going to put an ad on Facebook. Yes. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the content moderators are going to have no problem. They'll be fine with that, with that right? Yeah, it definitely <laughs> relates to these shirts. Absolutely. That's true. It's absolutely yeah. relevant. Sexy anomalies happen. Kate's got this great glow. Hey, Jordan, move your, move your beverage bottle. 
Or are we getting a little like, like around? Or? Just just move Off it somewhere team. other than right there because it's doing this great prism. No, it's still no, catching the sunlight the under it's the, the light. It's actually... I thought it was light coming through the bottle. You know what yeah, it is? Anomalies happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, Kate just has a real right. sexy glow coming off um, the table right now. Well, I've got. I, I had a deal with uh, JJ Abrams to come and shoot my yeah. segment yeah. of the screen tonight. We got so some lens flare. We're getting that nice lens flare going. Are you gonna split some of that? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a team player. Okay. All right. These side hustles on there. This is JJ Abrams. So as the hustle. sun goes down, this will yeah, yeah, yeah. this will clear up. Yeah, we Take shoot this in my foyer dining room area, if you will. And there's a wood floor and windows, and we don't have drapes or curtains, so the sun just like bounces and this whole thing is just. All so if you buy way. even more T-shirts, I'll get a curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much all I've got. Anybody got anything that they want to pimp out right now? Anything you're going to uh, do? Every Wednesday and Sunday, you can watch my wife, Jen Brown, famed voice actor, uh, play games on Twitch. What you're watching right now, uh, you go to twitch.com backslash Jen Brown plays. Uh, it, we'll see what wins the vote this week for Wednesday. And then actually this Sunday won't be up because she's going to be in Manchester, England. Signing autographs for fans. So if you live in Manchester and you want to get something signed by Jen Brown, now is your chance. Go to the town you're already in, but go to the place <laughs> where it's place. happening. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what it's called. Manchester City something. MCM, I think. Uh, but yeah. I've heard of yeah. that, actually. Yeah. yeah. I don't know it what could, it's called. but Could yeah. be wrong. I think it's called. But I mean, if you're, if you're in Manchester, you already know about this. And I mean, for the record, if anybody wants me to sign anything, just come on over. This yeah. Just come on over, and knock on the door. No. If you buy a shirt, maybe I'll sign. You. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy a shirt. No. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else? You guys uh, the thing. Little Mermaid is still running out at Zulker Hillside Theater for another couple of weeks. I think there's some sweet pictures of the costumes that I just spent the last two months on at Austin 360 mm -hmm. on the Austin 360 blog website Saw thing. That. Uh, and also, if you've been thinking about uh, sending some of your friends to come watch this, but they're like, oh, I don't want to catch up on all 11 past episodes, uh, I'm making a big old push to get uh, episode summaries up on the wiki. And they should be up by uh, the time this is up on YouTube on Thursday. <gasps> and that is Heroes of Awesome, all like hyphenated constellation, dot phantom, dot com slash wiki. It's not the easiest to write. <laughs> but I bet there's a link to it somewhere else. There's probably a link to it somewhere else. I actually Mark need to put one in the doobly doo down there. Yeah. Remind me of that afterwards and I'll put the yeah. a link in the thing and all this stuff. Uh, we'll take care of that stuff. Yeah, so there'll be a wiki coming up. You guys can catch up I'm on I'm saying it on the feed so it has to happen now. It's got to happen. Yeah. She's committed. Uh, also, uh, if you're in the Austin, Texas area and you like live storytelling, um, but not like children's storytelling, like moth-style <laughs> storytelling where real people talk about uh, stories from their lives, uh, then you should come to testify this Thursday at the Spider House Ballroom. It is a show that I produce, and um, their theme is Slings and Arrows, which is from the uh, To Be or Not To Be speech of Hamlet. So it is true tales about rageous fortune. Mm. 7.30, Spider House Ballroom, only $5. Good deal. Mm -hmm. That's a bargain. Very it affordable. It's a bargain. good show, too. Thank you. It's very good. I've actually been meaning to get up to Tesla for a while, and now yes, there's I'm... a baby, and it's just like. No, no, yeah. You know, you're okay. They're good. I'll get there. Thank you. I did. You... What? <laughs> what? That's crazy. Uh, okay, let's see if we get started with like a show. And like do some Star Trekking and adventuring and stuff like that. Uh, for that, we need to hear from the captain what happened last time. So let's check in with uh, Captain Rawl on her personal log. Personal log, Captain Lenara Rawl. I've gotten back my bearings after the attack by my fanatical parents in an attempt to separate my Rawl symbiont from my body. I'm more certain than ever that I chose the right path to break free from their zealotry years ago in pursuit of truth and exploration. My only regret was to let nostalgia and a sense of filial piety bring me back into their noxious orbit, which entailed keeping vital if personal information from the rest of my crew. But the sharpest blades are forged in the highest heat, and this seems especially descriptive of my crew and what they've been through in our short time together already. Commander Newman has proven himself worthy of the chair during my absence, in particular with the tough calls he made in the face of official orders. Chief Engineer Izzy has been tirelessly keeping the Mazu operational and bolstering morale. 
Chief Medical Officer Cade has rejoined our ranks, a decision neither he nor I made lightly, and one I hope neither of us comes to regret. And Commander Morgan. She bore the brunt of my fractured hosts after the attack, and I dare not think of what the situation could have been had there not been a telepath to help put the pieces back together for Rawl and myself. But even as I return to duty, there is an unfamiliar feeling, more like a sense of a memory remaining in my mind after Morgant's closeness with my hosts. And why does this thing feel distinctly Romulan? It's clear that our efforts to locate Dr. Jennifer Prescott and investigate the source of the space quake are running afoul of some who would stop at nothing to hamper our progress. Whether these forces are purely external or possibly include Starfleet itself is still a mystery. Regardless, ambiguity has only underscored my determination to get to the bottom of this. Crawl out. There we go. Sorry okay. about that, y'all. You, you got a lot of reach there. I got it. It's like, what? Eight feet over there, yeah. twenty feet yeah. over there, and you gotta I'm really like, get to it. So it's easy to miss when you click on something. Yep. I said that. I so I didn't. crack a towel. Thanks for the heads up. Can Thanks you hear us? Yay. 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 Yay! Okay. Gamer balls. Yeah. Both gamer balls and I am crack a towel. Thanks for thanks for keeping us honest, y'all. Because of you. We know this. Otherwise, we would have gone the whole three hours. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. would have been the minute horrible. the sound guy leaves and we all fall yeah, we apart. We all leave pretty much. Because <laughs> we're all watching this yeah. on mute. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh, as I was saying, because you all missed it, you guys are en route to Starbase 105 after leaving the encounter with Captain Archer. Uh, we've got several days' flight to get to 105. It's got some decent time to get there. So do you have any interpersonal conversations you want to have? Not any adventure conversations, any interpersonal conversations you want to have right now. We've got some time. If not, we can move on. Because I, I kind of feel like I had a lot of personal conversations over the past few games. I don't really have any. If I someone wants to have one with like me, I've had a few too. Yeah, if someone wants to have one with me, that's fine. But I don't yeah, have any, any pressing. You've all conversed out. I'm, I'm always in sick bay, so yeah. you know where to find me. Just playing cards with George. <laughs> you pretty much yeah, waiting for. <laughs> Someone I mean, to, you know, sick. a George and Cade interpersonal, that, yeah. that might be, because he's, he's come back as the chief medical officer. He has. So true. Mm -hmm. He has. Which George was serving as in the interim uh -huh. when he pieced out. I mean, how's that reintroduction going, guys? I don't know. <laughs> I'm waiting on you if you want to <laughs> I'm in sick. I'm, I'm sitting there Cut to monitoring sick things. Cut to sick bay. <laughs> yes. All right, George is over there working as well. You're just monitoring things. Yes. Or do we have any patients in there that we're nah. working? Okay. George is like stacking stuff, as he does. I'm humming a little tune while I look over. Make sure everything diagnostically, everything's aligned and calibrated. Don't want to be caught unawares. Do you have to narrate everything you do? My God. I just don't want just, to be clear. It's pretty clear what you're doing. You don't have to narrate all the things. I'm not used to this awkward silence. Usually you're running your mouth. So well, you're whatever. you're just going to sit there and give me the silent treatment, yeah, I'm going to narrate everything. You're the one that left. I don't know what you're doing. And I came back. Yeah. So. Oh, you came back. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you. Well, oh, good. I'm glad yeah. you came back. I Great. missed you, too. Your self-discovery has been remarkable. Blah, whatever. <laughs> Are you mad I didn't get you a souvenir? I'm always mad you didn't give me a souvenir. That's not the issue. The issue is that you left in the first place. And everybody else may be okay with this, that there's like, oh, come on back, Cade. But you left. You left your crew, you left your ship, you left everybody that depended on you. You're the CMO and you left. Why? Because, oh, you got your feelings hurt? Is that what happened? Oh, great, great, good. Let's see what happens the next time your feeling gets hurt. It's okay, but hey, I get it. I'm sorry I left you. It was a rash decision made in the heat of the moment and I... You make a lot of those. So do you, to be fair. I mean, you're not wrong, yeah. but I'm not the CMO. <laughs> it's true, but you were, and I heard you did an excellent job during the drills. Well, we were on a base doing drills. I don't want to be CMO. Let's be honest. I, you don't want me running it. No, I'm happy stacking, honestly. But it is good to know if something were to happen to me, or if I'm off the ship on an away mission or something, and something happens here, that I can count. I mean, I always knew I could count on you to 
you know, work your butt off, but I'm glad I know that I can count on you to take charge. Yeah, I'll cover your ass whenever you need it. Yeah, I'll probably need it quite a bit. You already have, so well, yeah, you will, you son of a bitch. Stack those crates. Anybody else got anything you want to do? <laughs> I love George. <laughs> <laughs> Fan favorite. It's true. Um, everybody else on the bridge? Where is everybody right now? I'm in my ready room. Ready room? Who's, yeah. who's running the show? Me. New you. Man. Look at you on the bridge. There's a hail. Uh, oh, whoops, hold on. <laughs> or is there? On screen. Yeah. Oh, now it's on screen. Um, it is one of the officers from Starbase uh, 234. It's like, uh, Commander, I uh, just want to let you know we got a message from Starfleet. They're asking you to uh, rendezvous at Starbase 234. Uh, there's apparently someone joining the crew. Really? Unknown. Those are just the orders we have from Starfleet. Passing it on to you. Thank you. Uh, we'll make sure to stop by Starbase 234 and pick up a new member. That sounds great. We can't wait to see you back here. The same. Great. Right. <laughs> 234 out. Uh, so it was already a hike and now we're backtracking? No. No, it's on the way. On, on the way. way. So we were coming from over here somewhere. This is 234 where we were, and that's where we're going. We that's left 234 to rescue you, made it to the other one. I was the backtrack. Uh, totally okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, I wouldn't call you something. You were the rescue mission. Yeah. Much you better. weren't the backtrack. Much better. The kidnappers were the backtrack. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. They really set us go. back. Uh. I should have. Uh, I should have listened to. Admiral uh, Grossich and just ditched you. We <laughs> 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 would be making this to this backtrack to two, three, four. And you would be writing a new character. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just the captain. It's weird how that worked out. No, that was crazy. All of a sudden, I'm the captain of the ship. It's <laughs> pretty funny. Always wanted to be a captain, and it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant to captain in like a month. It's amazing. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Oh, uh, okay, so you've got your orders. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, set a course for 234. Sure, yeah. Khan sets in a course for 234, and they adjust course. Um, do you want to talk to Captain about it? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll swing by the ready room. Right there. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Man, the last captain put a really excessive doorbell on. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound he made walking. <laughs> Newman speaks fluent jazz. Here I go. Blue's in a comms like. crazy because it's a Newman, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's me. You're here going a mile away. Yeah. Uh, come on in. Uh, just to give you an update, Captain, uh, looks like we're picking up a new crew member uh, on Starbase 234, so I adjust the course. Great. Who are, any information on who we're bringing aboard? No. Of course. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the lieutenant commander at Starbase 234 seemed rather brusque. I don't think we made a good impression on our last trip there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's somewhat understandable. Yes. Okay, I'll head over to the bridge. Come on over. Uh, we'll, we're going to assume if you guys don't have anything that you guys want to do, we're going to jump forward yeah. a little hot minute. It's going to take you about a day or so, probably two days, to get to 234 okay. until you get there. Uh, you arrive at 234, uh, taking a uh, holding position outside the base. Um, not too much longer, a shuttle uh, hails requesting permission to dock. Uh, would you like to give them permission to dock? Is it a Starfleet hail? It is a Starfleet yeah. hail. It's yeah. like you've got crew members coming aboard. Ah, uh, permission granted. The the shuttle docks. Um, do you want to meet this crew member? Yeah. Am I going to go down the shuttle bay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. You guys go down the shuttle bay. Uh, shuttle opens up, and a Vulcan officer uh, looks pretty, pretty new, mm -hmm. Lieutenant. Uh, steps off the uh, shuttle and heads straight to Captain Rawl to introduce herself. Hello, Captain Rawl? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Lieutenant Tashik. Uh, I believe I'm uh, joining your crew. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Do I already know what uh, role or? She'll be on con. 
Oh, perfect. <laughs> I uh, requested a transfer from the Pinnacle. Uh, I was their junior con officer. Oh, wonderful. I see. Any particular reason you chose the Mazu? Well, I wouldn't say I chose the Mazu. It was assigned to me. Uh, but I look forward to working on um, a ship with such history. <laughs> Diplomatically put. <laughs> um, even despite our uh, vintage or classic status, I'm sure you'll find that the missions and the work that we do about, aboard the ship uh, is definitely of the moment and does change indeed from moment to moment. You will certainly not be bored, as I hope. Um, I look forward to it, Captain. Good. Welcome aboard. Uh, we'll show you to the bridge, introduce you to the rest of the senior staff. Up to the bridge. It's catching on. That's going to be in the new Picard series. Really welcome. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> like a virus. Welcome to the jazz zoo. Oh, no, no. Oh, you gave Kate a headache with that one. <laughs> I'm a bit proud of it. I'm making a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's the mirror episode. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so uh, Okay, so you guys make it up to the bridge, so you're going to be on the bridge yes. still. Uh, are you going to engineer your upstairs? Uh, if I heard that we got new crew coming on, I'll be on the bridge. Come on up. Obviously, so you probably want to meet the new... I'm on the bridge. Absolutely, you're on the bridge. Where are you at, Kate? Uh, sick bay. Getting onto the bridge. Captain, you bring her up uh, to the bridge. And uh, now you have a chance to introduce her. Can, uh, actually, just real quick, can I just say that, like, as I'm on my way up, I just, like, ping Kate and be like, hey, new kid's here. If you're interested. Yeah, play nice. All right, on my way. George, you hold down the fort here. Really? Because yeah, there's so much happening question. right yeah. now. I don't know if I can make it. Oh, God. How will I ever get out? I have faith in you. The prophets will give you strength. Yeah, the prophets. <laughs> get out. All right. Just get I'm out. I'm going. Slowly. Uh, all right, you're back at the bridge. Kay's not there yet, but you can introduce the others. That's like. fine. Kay can jump in whenever. Uh, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Sheik, uh, new to our uh, con. Uh, Everybody, please make sure to give her a warm Mazu welcome. And um, I'm sure that we'll get you up to speed soon on our current mission. Um, actually, now. Is now a good time to do that? I don't know. Is it? I think it would be good to... Well, we need to do a big review anyway. Well, yeah. It's as good a way to brief someone as, as any. That's a great point. Um, yeah, we're due to get caught up. I uh, recently just reassumed duty myself. So... Uh, let's assemble in the, do we have a war room, meeting room? We have a room conference room. Conference room. Just call it the conference room? Yeah, sure. You can call, you can it, call you it the war room. You can call it the war room if you want. I mean, it's a little aggressive for Federation ship, but it it's up to the discretion of the, room room just of the, the teacher, the <laughs> captain. <laughs> yeah, the teacher, the teacher of the ship, the person who teaches the ship. We're going to call it Fort Awesome. Oh, no, we're not going to do let's that. Let's call the war room. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to that. That's, yeah. That's right. Uh, that remember, there's no fighting in the war room. That's All right. right. That's right. So in the war room, gonna have a meeting in the war room. Yeah. Excellent. Everybody head to the war room. I show up at the bridge. <laughs> what have we done? That's the third one. We're done. Okay. Um, all right. So the last uh, that I remember, we are on our way to Starbase 105 in pursuit of Jennifer Prescott, uh, Chief Engineer Izzy. I understand that you've made some progress in um, identifying this path. Where are we on the mission, and what do we know? What do we still not know? All right, well, first off, I go ahead and pull up a map of sort of this area to show where we currently are, Starbase 234, uh, where we are going, and what's in the neighborhood. And my computer is very helpful in not <laughs> cooperating. I appreciate the okay. verisimilitude, though. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, basically, uh, we're are we going to be cutting across Klingon space? Did we get clearance for that? Um, we'll say that you can make that because let's be honest, space is three dimensional. So while it looks like it's cut sure. off, there's probably like. I mean, I'm kind of assuming there. that there's some sort of approved path since that yeah. basically yeah, cuts you'll be between able to get two there. 
portions of Veterans Yeah, you'll be able to get through there. It's not going to be a straight line, but you can get there. Yeah, it's like a Z-axis alleyway or a sky bridge. By the way, yes. have you checked in with your Klingon friends since we resumed? I have not had a chance to. That's a, probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Let them know that we're headed back their way and that we've found something else. Maybe don't give them too big a head start towards Starbase 105, just in case. Sure. As soon as we get the full debriefing report here, I'm sure yeah. we can curate the appropriate amount of information yeah. to share with our Klingon allies. So, yeah. Um, there's a lot of information on where we've been, and there are a lot of open questions still left. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can just kind of begin at the beginning, review what's happened so far, what we've discovered, where, and then address questions as they come up. Sounds good to me. All right. Proceed. So we started with the cryptic orders sending us to Arista 3. Um, we were sent to Klingon Opera and orders to await the key before approach, at which point when we did get to the system, we had an Earth Opera sent back to us uh, in the key of C uh, from the gas giant in that system. As we approached, we found a station that was not Federation, but was a vaguely Federation design um, that had apparently been boarded by Orion pirates who uh, had killed most of the crew, which appeared to be researchers who were not necessarily Federation people, but appeared to be of the same sort of demographic ma mm. <laughs> <laughs> Your GM is hailing you. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. Uh, everybody's done that. Okay. Yeah, so. I'm getting to the first question, though. Okay, I was just making sure. <laughs> the first question being, how did the Orions get onto the station? There we go, all right. Continue. So, first question. How did the Orions get onto the station? <laughs> it made <me> salty. <laughs> I was getting there. <laughs> also, thank you for the level of detail issue. Um, dial it back. Um, <laughs> I mean, Most. hopefully this is also helpful to Lauren yeah. as well, right? That's, I yeah. mean, yeah, but Lauren is a new officer coming in. I don't think you're going to have an entire meeting. All with right. everybody. She right. can we'll give you a written around. thing on the... Oh, yeah. Anyway. I'll read the recap. The Orions were already on the station. The records, I believe, indicated that everything had been perfectly normal until suddenly there was an intruder alert on the research ring, which means somehow they managed to get directly on the research ring without going through the central core, the shuttle bays, or... I mean, presumably the system, the, the station was shielded, mm -hmm. so um, how would they have boarded? Did they punch through the shields? We know that their ship had a cloaking device. We've already uncovered where that came from. It came from the Romulans that presumably gave them the orders, or someone posing as Romulans who gave them the orders, and then they were subsequently uh, destroyed. Uh, just to jump in real quick, the base didn't actually have shields, you couldn't transport because of atmospheric interference oh, that's because right. of the yeah, gas giant. Interference. Okay. So, since the base didn't have shields, I guess they could have gotten a small craft close enough. They did transport them. They transported off. They transported off, but they required extra pattern buffers to do that. How did they transport on? Did right. they just transport from the cloaked ship and it just got in close enough that they could transport on? Seems most likely that either whoever was in charge of the station gave the pirates access or someone aboard the station allowed them mm -hmm. on they board. The they had a mole or a, mm -hmm. some kind of or traitor. It's also possible they were a trusted entity, that these uh, Orion pirates were actually working alongside the people uh, on the station until uh, an order was given to liquidate. These are all good workable theories. Yes. Um, what additional open questions do we have at this time, of um, course, aside from the whereabouts of Dr. Jennifer Prescott? And also, just to, uh, again, they're working with the Romulans. I mean, I'm not crazy about this. Correct? They the said, Orions? Well, the Orions yes. The Orions were. said that they were working with the Romulans. Oh. And, the, which, and I was a little, I was inebriated at the time. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is entirely true. Mm -hmm. Apologies for my forgetting. Or at least intoxicated. <laughs> yes, good word, intoxicated. Um, but yeah, I did forget that. 
uh, <laughs> rather important point. Of course they were. Now, whether they were telling us the truth or whoever who was hooking them up with equipment was being straightforward with them is another matter entirely. They were telling us the truth. Moments before they were presumably killed by... It did feel very much like the leader of the Orions was looking to hand off all of the information she had because she was very much done with it, yes. Yes. No, no, she was telling the truth. Yeah. So she was working... She understood that it was Romulans. It's possible that it was someone... She not only understood that... It was that they were working for Romulans. She understood that they had failed to get the Romulans what they were looking for. It's true. Mm. She knew that she was dead. They, yeah, they were getting, or if she didn't leave, which she did. She tried. Yeah. Now, another idea, uh, theory that has been bouncing around in my head uh, is in regards to why Prescott and, what's the Andorian's name? Uh, Shal Azequin. Shal, oh, Shal. Uh, and Azequin would be the first Jinx. name, right? Well, Shal's the first Shal's name. First. Shal uh, is the name you need okay. to worry about. Uh, that Dr. Prescott and Shal uh, went to Klingon space to uh, set off the quake, uh, which we also know happened at all places at the same time. It was not actually a wave, but uh, an immediate perimeter Event. from the ship. Were they, was it a distraction to cover their escape because it didn't work? Or were they trying to complete the test that was supposed, to, that the, the station was uh, dedicated to uh, create? Um, that they were completing the, the experiment? That's working under the assumption that it happened intentionally. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but that is an assumption. It is. It is. Uh, I certainly don't think that they were using it to distract or to help in their escape because they were already traveling fairly covertly. This is true. And while it's certainly it certainly interfered, it drew far more attention. Let me just say, that's not the wisest strategy if you're looking to escape quietly yes. to make a very big noise. Well, and I don't know which is scarier, whether they set off the quake intentionally or whether it was a unintended consequence of whatever they've been working with. Yeah, a byproduct of changing ships. Maybe the uh, experiment failed and what we saw was an accidental result. Or the experiment succeeded but wasn't intended to be done at that time. Also true. Mm. All the more reason to continue our pursuit of Dr. Jennifer Prescott to try to get some answers here. I mean, more to the point, one of the larger questions is also what were they researching on mm -hmm. that station? It was not an official Federation station, so presumably whatever was being done there, well, there's a few options. One is that it was something that would not be legal under Federation law and it was someone skirting the law. It could be that it was just an extremely top secret, basically black site, and they just were trying to cover Federation affiliation. Uh, it could be that it was being done by someone who wasn't even affiliated with the Federation. They just happened to use some Federation technology. and Federation personnel and be able to disappear that Federation personnel from Federation records, faking deaths mm -hmm. of at least two of the personnel working there. It seems likely that there's at least some level of Federation involvement. If not official, then mm -hmm. high-ranking members. Mm -hmm. Well, as evidenced by some of the missing data that exactly. Chief Engineer Izzy has been able to pinpoint with the help mm -hmm. of some um, other Starfleet officers. Right. Um, have any of those yielded any salient results or information beyond just knowing that data was deleted? So, um, the, the equipment that we were able to find at Barracks 3 mm -hmm. pointed to one was a piece of equipment that um, 
was modified from basically a stasis field intended to hold uh, humanoid life forms, mm -hmm. um, but was much higher powered. Um, and then the other, what was it? You said it was a force field? Yeah, so one of them was used for holding, okay, modified for containing humanoid life forms, but it was highly powered as though it was designed to work off the warp engines that were powering the entire station, so that makes sense. So that was basically containing humanoid life forms. The other one was a modification of a medical stasis field, which uh, was modified to isolate subatomic particles. Mm. Now, thinking about that in terms of um, something that could be used in either a defensive or offensive manner, one of the first things that comes to mind, especially given the nature of the quake, putting all of those pieces together, what my mind jumps to is something that could combat the Borg. Hmm because the quake affected mechanical systems, but not biological. Um, compelling. It's compelling. Boom. It's a compelling theory. That, that is my have... theory. However, I am very much interested in what other people have thought of. Hmm. The effect of, effect of affecting mechanisms instead of biology would be useful against I think any opponent. It would be most useful against the Borg, which are both, but I mean, being able to disable a ship without harming. That has ramifications for all species. Yes, especially yeah, life in an support. offensive capacity. I mean, yes. yeah, it would be a very effective weapon against all species. However, um, now given that we did see that they had the two runabouts uh, at the center of the quake. Uh, and were able to escape in one, um, that makes me think that they do also have some sort of defense against the effects of the quake. Um, however, if that was set off as some sort of weapon, it would just disable everyone in the vicinity unless, uh, say, an entire fleet was outfitted with a, that defensive mechanism. But they had two shuttles there and one had one, to be abandoned. One linked away. So. But that limping was still better than all of the other ships within the quake zone. It might have been uh, just due to their knowledge of what would happen, that they could yes. uh, repair faster or prepare in a way that no one else could. Uh, had everything shut down or at minimal systems so that it would be minimally affected. And perhaps you could make this more tactical. Uh, so it would be have a smaller radius uh, if you were to fight the Borg, that this was... Uh, uh, this experiment was beyond wild imagination. The hope would be that you could target one ship or one cube. Yes. Could you even target one human who's been assimilated? Unclear. Theoretically, if you could, if you can affect the radius in any way, you could make it as large or small as the power supply would allow. That would likely kill the subject. I only ask for the status, if there's a status field for the humanoid. The stasis field, stasis right. Field. So if they could uh, only kill the board the nanites. Function. It's feasible. It's super science. It's super <laughs> science. Like, you look really skeptical. It's super science. No, 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 it's not that. It's just, again, we're working on a number of assumptions here. A, yes. that, this that this space quake was the intended effect, that it was intentional, mm -hmm. right? And again, Great. not the byproduct or a surprise. Mm -hmm. Now, it very well could have been exactly what they were working on, and they could have meant to, to set it off. But that's an assumption. I just want to be very clear that that's an assumption that we're making yes. and not an unintentional byproduct of whatever they were trying to do. Because they were changing, uh, I believe, attempting to change ships or something along those lines. Well, they had cleared the... What, they cleared the warp drive they, from one? Yeah. And we have since seen sensor data that suggests that second warp drive has been installed in the second And runabout. modified, correct? And modified, yeah. yes. Um, to power something that I don't remember. Two questions I have. Because we have a lot of unanswered mysteries. The first is, 
can we answer any of them without finding Dr. Prescott and Shaw first? Or will answering any of them help us? Yes. Track down Dr. Prescott and Shaw. And which ones? Because those need to be prioritized. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So we can sit here and theorize and conjecture. We're all very smart people and what can imagine need to do terrible is to things. Catch up to the two of them. We also still are unclear as to whether we are chasing fugitives or whether we are helping to rescue someone who's running from someone else. Again, a question that we won't have answers to until we actually catch up to them. I think getting there first is going to be the priority for us on this ship. I think it's not wrong to discuss potential. Certainly. So, so, no, do, so we are back underway, right? Yeah, we're on our way right okay. now. Oh, we are? Aren't we? Nobody we did not we specify that. Y'all, as far as I knew, y'all are still at Starbase. Oh. Oh, no. I'll, I'll get this going. Y'all are yeah. still at Starbase you, until somebody says. I'll come back on the Here it's a hike. So well, and thanks. suddenly we're a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's given the orders here? Yeah. yeah, I'll go on the bridge and orders back on course because there's no reason for us to stay at the start okay. race. All right. Need to get Nelson rolling. plots a course for 105. It's the end of the way. What speed? Uh, Warp well, fast. What we're, whatever we were at prior. I don't remember which we were. Eight. Uh, we didn't Eight. specify the most yeah. We were, we were trying to cruise. Fast. I knew this was gonna. it's still going to be a while. We were booking it until Archer decided he wanted to play a little street race. No, no. We us. booked it away from Archer That's right. Well. We continued that to book it and eight. he followed right. us yeah. and then we spanked him and then we continued going. Yeah, we give him a poke in the eye. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so that takes yeah. us down to, well. that takes us down eight. Uh, minus two, so that takes us down six, so we are now at nine. Okay, just wanna make sure we keep track of the power. Yeah. Yep, cool. that's what I'm doing. Okay, so you're at warp eight, uh, on your way to 105. Continue. <laughs> So our, our bearing towards 105, that information came from where? That came from uh, sensor readings that were uh, given to me by um, my daughter. The ones that had been deleted, before. correct? Uh, no, they actually had not been deleted. I was able to put, those, uh, put that information onto an air gap device uh, and when Morgan, Morgan decrypted it, there was no attempt to counter oh. that decryption as we had seen in the past. Um, I would say at this point that one incident of that working, I'm not willing to call uh, a completely successful test, but it is definitely useful data to have um, and that we should continue to uh, air gap data as we get it because there is definitely someone working against our information gathering. We I think can confidently say they're within Starfleet, um, but we don't know who. Hmm. Someone knew where you'd be. Mm -hmm. We didn't know where you would be until we were headed there. Someone tipped your parents off. I'm inclined to agree with you there. Oh, good. <laughs> I would have concerns <laughs> if you didn't. The coincidence is too. It's it's too strong. I mean, I I agree, and this somewhat complicates my orders to keep in touch with the Admiralty as well when it comes to this mission in particular. I will say, I have never worked a mission with this level of contact. Between the captain and the admiral's team? Mm -hmm. uh, with two admirals, no less. It is an unusual level of oversight. I think, if I may, this is speaking a little bit out of my position on the ship, but in the resistance, we found great success in avoiding infiltration, corruption, moles of that sort by having separately functioning cells without an overall hierarchical command structure. Each cell was responsible for itself. And I'm not saying that we go completely off the radar here, but compartmentalization of information may be a wise course of action given our inability 
to know who to trust in this situation. The Admiralty wants us to keep them informed. We choose what information we parcel out to them. I understand. Commander Newman, uh, take some time to review that suggestion and uh, possible ways we could implement it. I'm not sure I'm quite there yet since we are a small ship and we have, have had a lot of odds against us. Um, my inclination is that at least internally we remain free and open with our information, at least with one another. Certainly. I believe Cade was suggesting that we are the cell. The oh. ship itself. I see, as we opposed to dividing the ship into multiple cells. That sounds a lot better. It's a lot easier to confirm that we can trust fellow crew members upon the ship rather than trying to verify our ability to trust everyone in Starfleet, for instance. Sure, sure. I would assume that if there was any uh, potential uh, for uh, untrustworthy crew member, you would have sussed it out by now. Well, if the events nope. of the past few uh, days and weeks have been anything, we must remain vigilant, although continuing to trust in one another. I think that our crew is has been through a lot, and we've certainly solidified our relationship and commitment to this mission here. But uh, Within the realm of being able to trust one another, I think we do have to address a certain element, which is that... Half of the senior staff aboard the ship right now was handpicked by that admiralty. You were not given the agency to pick your own senior staff. To what ends we were each selected to serve in these positions, I'm not saying that any of us is necessarily a plant or a mole, but I certainly know that my own tendencies may have been a factor in trying to design a mission to fail. Mm. Or conversely, you may have been chosen for the benefits you might have offered this crew outside of a normal Starfleet officer. It's possible. It and depends on the motive of... We don't know the motivation of the Admiralty. Right. But I'm inclined to agree with Chief Izzy here. As long as we can focus on what we can do to bring our best, be our best, and look out for our own liabilities and the liabilities of one another, um, functioning as a complete cell if you will, stands a better chance of success, at least in getting some answers with this mission. It's also easier to control and locate any leaks within the cell if you're not having to worry about leaks within the entire organization. Morgan, you look troubled. Well, I will say I obviously have my own background with being on a need-to-know basis. I don't think we're in a position, and I don't think it would be I think that it would be better if anybody, if there is a leak or if there is wherever this person entity is situated, I think it's better if they don't realize we can't change our protocol and we can't give the appearance of any knowledge of this. Otherwise, they'll change their tactics. Mm -hmm. And we're not even sure what they are. So the more that we can, continue to appear operating as normally as possible, perhaps even in the way that it was intended, the safer we are, or the more of a head start we have to get the information necessary to make an informed decision. I don't think that the chief medical officer is incorrect, but I don't think that that's where I don't think we can justify breaking any sort of protocol at this point, and I also think that it would tip off whoever our adversary is. We might also be able to test the leak by giving them some misleading information. I think that that's further on down the road. I don't think we're there yet. Again, we've got too many unanswered questions and theories that that we don't have a way to prove. They right? are very much not yet baked. They're not. And so I think, we, I think we're aware, but I don't think we're in a place to act on that at this point in time. That's my recommendation, Captain. 
initiating a mole hunt without having any suspects already is just it's paranoia. going to create absolutely a storm of paranoia on the ship. So the question is, how do we proceed? Do we... I mean, obviously, we have been ordered to pursue Prescott, and I do think that we will find the most answers when we do catch up to her. Um, I think the best that we can do at this point is continue in our mission, as stated, bearing in mind that depending on how we find Dr. Prescott, in what condition, and what doc, you know, provided that we are able to get some of these answers, I'm not sure how much we can, what are you looking for? I am concerned about two things. Possibly they're the same thing. You discovered that she was afraid of Starfleet, yes? Mm-hmm. Terrified. She was terrified of Starfleet pursuers. So, in order to catch up to her... Amber. Amber was terrified. Did it seem as though that fear came from something that Jennifer had told her? I imagine that it came from years of what Jennifer had told her, but there was nothing direct in that moment, as I remember. Yeah, I don't think there's any clear evidence there from that encounter. So, if Jennifer... What I got, what I got from, from Jennifer, or I'm sorry, what I got from Amber Prescott was, uh, was that she was terrified. And I didn't even get anything about Jennifer from her. It was from the smaller Jennifer Prescott, the non-doctor Jennifer Prescott, that I got any information whatsoever. So the child was afraid of Starfleet? No, the child, the child had seen her aunt seen her and aunt. wanted to know if she was going to be okay. But Amber was terrified to the point that she lost, it, all it was was a feeling. I didn't even really get any words or messages from her. There was such a strong, intense feeling of fear and such strong mental walls that were not, they came up not because she'd been trained to use them, but out of this deep emotion. Does that make sense? It was instinctive. Yes. It was instinctive and practiced. Mm. Again, not taught, but practiced. And I can only assume uh, what Jennifer Prescott has been dead for decades? Seven years. Okay, close to a decade. There's just been, there was such... It's plenty of time to practice. I mean, and again, this wasn't training. This played over and over in the head until it became uh, more and more true and more and more terrifying that this specter of Starfleet was something that must be feared. Or she practiced her story ah. over and over and over again until it became very close to truth. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was actually the fear. I don't think the fear came out of that practice. Mm. I think the fear created that practice. I see. Hmm. <sighs> All right, well, with that lead, Basically, we've exhausted that particular lead as much as we have. We're following the lead, the best information that we have to get to Starbase 105 in pursuit of Dr. Prescott. Um, what do we know about her, uh, her accomplice? Shal Azaqueen. Shal Azaqueen. Is there anything relevant that we haven't, that he could was, possibly yield another lead? He was a member of uh, Andorian Security. Uh, also reported dead, but less recently, right? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. Um, that was the conversation with Sean. I don't see it on my sheet. Ah, uh, uh, yes, three years. He's been reported dead for three years. 
-hmm. Are there any other potential leads that we can gain from investigating or looking deeper into his record or anything of that nature? Um, we, I we did find much. out what he had been working on. Right. He was a musician who worked on um, acoustics. A musician working on acoustics. Um, like it, he happened to be a musician. His research was in acoustics, but he also happened to be a musician. Sure. Well, that may explain why the uh, the operas were the key. Yes, as he was a security officer. Oh. It's uh, also, I mean, how the. Um, Acoustics. Harmonic frequencies, the physical essence of sound. Right. Yes. The range at which and how mm -hmm. whatever they were working on went through space. Mm -hmm. Possible, uh, but uh, acoustics. Of note. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Acoustics ty typically travel uh, through space, not at all places at once. Well, let's see if we can do any, uh, run some data or simulations through the, com the computer to cross-reference the operas that we understood as keys with any of the data that we gathered from the space quake to see if we can find any patterns or similarities in there. Sure. Could an acoustic force be transmitted through subspace? Great. In the same way that we transmit signals almost instantaneously. For communication? If you were to... There's, there's no atmosphere. Uh, acoustics uh, travel through, through some sort of medium, uh, and space has no medium to travel through. But if subspace was used as a medium, and they had somehow discovered a way to... Harness that. Ripple it the way that air is rippled by sound. Yeah. Mm. Let's let the computer do the heavy lifting on this and see if we can maybe roll yes. dice and get any kind of successful... <laughs> what was I that, know. Captain? <laughs> that's, a, that's a powerful metaphor. I'll roll the dice on it, on it. yes. Yeah. Let's roll the, the dice. Roll the dice. <laughs> theory. Let the computers roll the um, dice, see if anything comes up. It might also be worth yeah. uh, involving our science officer in some of that conversation. Of course. Um, He's your science well, the, 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 the another one. He's a better one. The whole <laughs> science crew. He's an anthropologist. <laughs> Please I'm feel sorry. free to enlist anybody in the science crew yes, to run might. these scenarios. Out of out of curiosity, what is Ensign Storl's uh, specialty? Oh, uh, his focus is? Yeah. Linguistics, environmental degradation, and solar system development. Oh, <laughs> jeez, they really... Messed us up when it came to like actually like, thinking about like hard science. There's nobody who knows physics on this ship. There's pretty much some random stuff. What's he gonna like? I don't know. I, <laughs> I can't say that out loud on the stream. No. I, I, <laughs> Linguistics I, and bleep. I, I kind of know some of that stuff, but it's not my. Yeah. Well, environmental degradation my would maybe subspace is a part of that. Who knows? Y'all just yeah. work on it. Yeah. You guys, you I'll, guys work on it with a really high quality ancient computer. Yeah, certainly. To be fair, it's also a Vulcan. Props. I mean, if nothing else, we can logic it out. That's you guys right. had a pretty good conversation that one time, right? That's right. We did. We did. That's right. I have to ask to check. You've been on this ship how long? <laughs> An hour. A few hours. An hour. <laughs> Maybe at this point. It's all been talking. Yes. It's all been talking, and you haven't said much, but you've heard a lot of stuff going on. How are you feeling through all of this? You're asking the wrong <laughs> entity. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I feel that there's not much direction. There's a lot of unknown. I am glad now that they are proceeding with uh, business as usual for Starfleet, as opposed to what Cade had suggested. Well, as <laughs> usual as our business gets. <laughs> yeah, if you're disappointed with the uh, lack of direction. <laughs> it, um. it seems... The whole, I have only just joined, but the paranoia, uh, since I haven't experienced what the crew has experienced yeah. of Starfleet, I feel. It may, I'm not sure how much of it is substantiated or how much of it is just paranoia. So are you saying this in character is Lauren? 
I'm kind of a boat. I think you should be in character. Okay. You should no, role play I'm that. saying, okay. Yeah. Who is it, asking to Shackman? The, I am in my mind. George. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we've got a hail from Starfleet. Hey, ask him about the stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, first off, how do you spell your name again? T apostrophe S H E K. Oh, I was so close. And okay. It's Tashik. Tashek. Tashek. I think he said Tashik earlier, but it's Tashek. Tashek. I just feel like there's a great role play opportunity here for a new lieutenant yeah. hearing all this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Stuff. <laughs> um. Well, Captain, I, I know I've just joined this crew, and I have not experienced some of the things that, is, uh, problems with Starfleet, it seems, that your crew has. Uh, but uh, I hesitate to jump to any conclusions of mass conspiracies. Uh, it, sometimes the... Uh, simplest answer is the right one. So rather than a huge conspiracy, perhaps it is just two people and a small crew that has been rogue. And um, so I do have to, I, I hope that we do continue to keep Starfleet in the loop of what we're doing and uh, stick to our protocol. I know that I just joined here, but since there has, and I'm sure the security officer might question my motivations. However, it seems that your issues have been ongoing. So whatever has been causing the problems, it's been on the ship for some time now. Indeed, yes. I, I look forward to more of your cool-headed and rational logic, which will undoubtedly act as a balm for the rest of us, having been put through our paces since the very start of this particular mission. And Thank I, you for your insight. And I do look forward to earning this crew's trust in time. This is actually an interesting opportunity, given the information that you have. What would your most obvious guess be? I, w I would I hesitate to think that Starfleet knows exactly what is going on there. I do it is possible that there is a very uh, private study going on, top security level. Mm -hmm. I know I've heard rumors of Omega elements out there that they could be harnessing, or like you said, the fighting board technology. I can't imagine Starfleet and Romulans would be working together. Well, I think of all the conjecture that has been put out here. I'm not sure Romulan and Starfleet working together has been on that list. It is worth noting that the Romulan reemergence did occur approximately seven years ago. Just another data point. The Borg actually came after. Sure. We're looking for reasons why Jennifer Prescott was disappeared seven years ago. <sighs> and it does call into question the idea that they were working on a device to fight the Borg if she was taken seven years ago. Yes. I had not considered the timeline when I made that theory. No, but uh, it, it, <laughs> it seems somewhat accurate based on what we know the, the quake does. But again... If the quake was intentional, and if it was intended as an offensive device, it would cripple any spacefaring technology. And a few just real quick follow-up questions, uh, just since I was running a little late uh, to the meeting. 
who is she, what is she doing here, and where is Ramirez? We told you, <laughs> you were told that it, a new crew member was joining. Uh, she, she said there was a new kid. Chief was, medical officer, is, Cade, I'm yes. going to introduce you to Lieutenant Tashek, our new con. Hi. Hello. I need you to come by sick bay later to do a little diagnostic scan on you. Uh, standard procedure, you're clearly a fan of those. And what happened to Ramirez? He's around. Okay. Do we know what? He's just yeah. around, right? Do he's doing what he always GM, does. GM, he's just around, right? I'm just going to say he's on a different rotation. Sweet. He's changed rotation. I think okay. he's asleep. <laughs> We're lucky if he's asleep. Well, that's true. He may be up to something. Probably. Um, Have you? He's taking night shift. He's wasn't sure if he had a relapse on... and we needed to put him back in stasis. We're or working on that shuttle. <laughs> he sounds interesting. <laughs> he's a handful, all right. Um, well, Captain, if... Uh, if there's nothing else to discuss, I would like to take uh, Lieutenant Tashek around the ship and explain our uh, unique tactics, given our expansive uh, shuttle bay, and what she can expect. Certainly. Oh, definitely show her um, the, the upgrades to the runabout. Oh, well, I'm curious to see them myself up close. Mm, that could be fun. <laughs> oh. I do you have, have such a, a focus weird notion on extra vehicle activity. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. Well played. Don't let Ramirez know that. What was Ramirez's buddy's name? Milo. Ensign Milo also engages in extravehicular activities now and again. I don't know that he's trained in it so much, but... Three shuttlecrafts and one roundabout? Is that correct? Runabout. Runabout. We actually have four shuttles. It's a running joke in you. Yeah. How did that even happen? It wasn't me saying it. Yeah. We have four, right? Yeah. yeah, we actually have four shuttle paths and, and a runabout. Tonight. And right. the runabout has recently received security upgrades. <laughs> oh. Uh, Why? Red alert hits. Oh, You're getting called to the bridge immediately. Right. Go to the bridge. To the bridge. Oh. You know, come with me uh, now. Yeah. Ensign Nelson is at the bridge. Captain, we have a huge power spike right outside the bridge. Is, uh, are we out of work? Scanning right now. You are still at warp. You're okay. at warp eight right now. What? Okay. Uh, uh, you want to drop out of warp? Uh, let's all run out onto the bridge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to see. I want to see those sensor readings. Yeah. All right, you can see them. Uh, give me a check. Let's go with insight and uh, science. Actually, ship Difficulty assist. Zero. Ship assist. Yes, please. We'll do a ship assist with. Hang on, the ship assist. These are combat. Why? Where are all these Insight and science? Uh, ship assist with sensors and uh, Ooh. science. Um, sensors and science. Okay. Okay. Fail. Uh, three successes. Beautiful. I'll give yourselves three moments in there. Difficulty zero. Oh, dang. Mm. I'm going to get some more info. Um, <laughs> this... These sensor readings are coming across as a high yield explosive device. Oh, that's attached fine. Attached to the hull of the constellation ship Mazu. So, right like it's bridge. attached but it hasn't exploded yet? Exactly. It has activated. A high yield explosive device. Um, do we need more information? Yep. Let's get some more information. What more information do you want? Oh, uh, um, how did, did it get, get there? <laughs> Who put it there? Oh, how, how did, did they get, get there? Just all of that. Just all of that? Just how everything? Do we, Sorry, how do we get it What did you say, Captain? I want to know how it's attached. Yeah. How it's okay. attached. Uh, it is a combination. There are magnetic locks, but it also appears as if there are some physical bindings to the exterior hull as well. I want this thing off my ship. You said it's right outside the bridge? It is right outside the bridge. It is right outside the ready room. Room! <laughs> Good thing we're on the bridge now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seems I probably can't just lock onto that with a transporter and transport it far away from us, can is I? Is there any way to disable it? Can we spend some momentum to find out if there's something we can do to uh, disable it but keep it attached? First, I am going to recommend that we drop out of warp. Yeah. Let's do that. Dropping out of warp? Yeah. Uh, Ensign Nelson drops out of warp. As soon as she hits the uh, dropping out of warp and you start slowing down, the energy signature spikes. Oh, that's like speed. Yeah, it's about Back to, to us. Okay. Back to There's warp. Back to warp. Back to warp. Back to warp. Yep. Back to warp. We're, we're at eight. It has stabilized, but the it is increasing in power. Is, is it continuing to increase? It is continuing to increase. Our... Oh, okay. 
Maybe it's Is there anything we can do to polarize the hull to maybe undo the at least the magnetic bindings? Anything um, there? I'm just yeah. How how? Tell you what, let's take a bio break. Okay. When I come back, we'll deal with this. All right. So we'll be back in just a minute because this is going to be a lot of some discussion. days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Oop. And that's the wrong one. <laughs> there we go. That's my joke. And we're back, and that's her joke. Uh -huh. Hi, everybody. Uh, quick bio. Thanks for the patience. Thanks for hanging out with us. There's a bomb on the Mazu. What? How'd that happen? Uh, can I continue asking questions based on that sensor? Yeah, sure. Why not? Thing. Okay. Uh, is there any information I can glean on how we might be able to detach or disarm it? Uh, not really. Okay. Well, I mean, if you want to get more specific, I can tell you that. Okay, so I already know how it's attached. Can I tell anything about what kind of explosive device it is? Um, you could assume that it would be equivalent I mean, to worth burning a momentum actually, for this information. I mean, it might be. Do you want to burn that? Momentum? I mean, like, do do I need to burn this this momentum to get that information? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hold on one second. Let me find out what it's going to be the best. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Is this danger zone music? Is that yeah. Okay, so we're clear. Okay. Where is the thing I'm looking for? Talk amongst yourselves while I find this. I apologize. I should have had this written down. Something sciencey about don't. what's happening. Insert science. Gibberish here. So clearly the solution officer. here is to send our brand new officer with the EVA focus yeah, out to detach the bomb, right? We're, we're at warp. warp? At warp, yeah. She will die. She'll be inside the warp bubble. The warp bubble extends a little bit past the, the outside of the ship. That's how that works. I don't know. Can we do anything to a create idea. a force you know field like on the bridge to at least shield us from whatever situation is happening here? You can try, try anything. We could try putting a force field around it around the bomb itself. To try Have to you tried it? turning it off and turning it on? <laughs> 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 um, can we identify what kind of technology it looks like? That's what he's oh, looking that's at what right now. Okay. Yeah, I didn't write it down, and unfortunately, this is not the uh, best. Uh, I love this game, but maybe reorganize your core rule book. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's, it's an observation. Fire. Pew, pew. There we go. Uh, it would be the equivalent uh, yield wise of like a quantum torpedo. So it would, it would mess up the bridge. Oh, the bridge would be gone. We'd be toast. Okay. The yeah. bridge would be the bridge, and a huge chunk of the saucer section would be gone. All right. So. Well, and like the whole ship is a saucer section, so. So really, no amount of force fielding around us or the bomb is going to do lickety. Well, if we could sex successfully put. A shield up around a force field up around that thing, but yeah, that 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 part is the first big if. Can it be done? Can it be done? Do I know how to do that? Is that a thing that I know how to do? You can try anything you want to try. <sighs> I would answer. rather I would rather try to get the thing <laughs> I would off rather. of us, and I would ideally like to disable it, if yeah. possible. So, do so we, we so that's the it. yield on it, but no other information about the mechanism, like. I actually how, lied to you. I said the wrong thing. I meant to say plasma torpedo, which is bigger than a quantum. Yeah, I apologize. Yes. Oh, right. That's, that's yeah. great. Great. I mean, I'm not sure it's bigger, but it. It'll. Hurt you. It's comparable. It's comparable. <laughs> it'll mess you up. It'll take out the bridge and a few decks around bridge at minimum. Um, but can I tell anything about the, the, the technology? Like what? Probably can, not without seeing it. Looking at it. Yeah. Is it by chance outside the window? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Do we can not have we any try like it off with a broomstick? Let's, uh, let's see. Let's say that there is a 20% chance that you'd be able to see it looking out one of the portals. So for a 20% chance, what do I have to roll on a 20-sided die? That's going to be one, two, three, or four. Is that correct? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So one, two, three, or four. Five. You'll be able to, isn't it? No, that'd be that'd be twenty five percent chance. No, five times four. Yeah. yeah. Right. So four. But what so about five? <laughs> but maybe five. Just maybe roll five? a one through four. That's all I ask. I'm just going to roll one, two, three, yeah, four. Okay. One. Holy shit, it's a two. Yeah. <laughs> we can see it. Potty mouth. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Put it in Barrett's jar. Yeah, put it, in my, put it in the jar that I usually fill right. up. Put it in Barrett's kombucha bottle. <laughs> we, we played D and D Sunday, and I'm still in D and D mode right now. Anyway, uh, you can if you go out into the ready room and you look out, you do see the side of a uh, device just barely there. You can see the. Side All right, of the Morgan, device. let's take a look. Okay. No, it's not easy to see. You're not going to yeah. get a good look at this thing, but you can take a look at that thing. If you want to, uh, let's do a let's do a reason and security check for you, and let's do a reason and engineering check for you. Okay. Uh, difficulty one. Hmm, no successes. One. Okay. Um, the you can see that it is definitely physically attached to the hull. Okay. Um, you can actually see a little area where it looks like it has penetrated the skin of the hull itself. Okay. Uh, it has self-sealed though, that's why there was no hull breach that was registered at any point. Mm. Um, it's really hard to tell anything as to like the makeup, origins, anything yeah. like that. Like yep. who that could have been developed by or anything like that. Um, while they're doing that, I'd like to um, hail uh, any other medical personnel on the ship, whether they're on shift or not. Get like ready. centralized in sick bay, get ready for. Okay. Um, we should also probably casualties. evacuate. Yeah, we should evacuate. Yeah. Not essential personnel. Yeah. Is yeah. there any way that we can preemptively like slice off and disengage the ready room or the part of the ship that is already attached to it and sacrifice? You know. Oh, part. sort of what I was thinking was maybe just get underneath it and blow that part of the hull off. Though it's a very good chance that if it can if it's detect an explosive, a maybe blow off is not the way to go. Cut off. Okay, yeah. Release. I'm not, yeah. I'm not Release. sure we could do that fast enough without triggering something on the device, though, given its response to our speed. The speed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first thing first, um, are you evacuating the bridge? Yes. Okay, there is a battle bridge on this ship, so you can go relocate there. Oh, the yeah. essential crew to the battle bridge. Yep, essential crew to okay. battle bridge. Go. So crew goes down to battle bridge. Um, and I would also just recommend getting non-essential crew as far from that point as possible. So okay. basically back towards engineering. I go on calm and let the peeps know. All right, uh, everybody is taking position. Um, you're still at red alert, but they're all taking position. You've evacuated most of the crew down to the battle bridge. Uh, it doesn't take long before you all are back on the battle bridge itself. You do have access to all the same sensors and everything like that. It is much smaller, but you do have access to it. Um, the the energy readings are definitely starting to spike. You can make a valid assumption that that thing's gonna go off fairly soon. Um, is it attached in a point that I would be able to get to what's directly inside the hull? Uh, so basically what you're looking at is you've got the exterior hull, mm -hmm. there's going to be gap. There's some and gap. And there's gonna be interior hull. You're gonna have to get through this hull, get through this and get to that. Um, is it a clean look? No, there's no way. There's gonna be a lot of conduits and everything that are between you and the exterior hull. Okay. I mean, the first thing I wanted to see was just basically, is it as far in as the interior hull? Oh, uh, you can check that out. Yeah, you can yeah. see if it goes down. I just take a quick look and see if it's. Yeah, you can totally do that. And is it outside of anything critical? Like bridge. it's it's near the bridge. Is it like outside of the bridge? Yeah. Oh, it's oh, yeah. attached I mean, to the outside of the bridge. Okay. There's the bridge and the ready room, and there's the bomb. So I mean, that is it will take out the entire bridge. I know it'll take it out. I'm saying, what is it physically attached to? Like, is it is it on the outside of the hull of the ready room? Yes. Okay, so like we're in the red room looking out the window and I can also see where it would be coming through if it came through and yes. it has not. Okay. There you go. Um, so no amounts of shields or force fields or maybe concentrating shields to that side of the ship to just sort of buffer it, save as much as we can. I think it would be inside the shields, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'd have it's to set right up. I think we're going to have to... 
yeah, take we, it off. We have to get it off. Um, do we, we have any automated, uh, like, do, are the shuttle bays equipped with any kind of automation so we could kind of remote control, drive it, pluck it off like an errant lice, and then fling it? Um, you can definitely try. You are flying warp eight. Warp eight. Yeah. We can't but we've got it. a sweet new Vulcan <laughs> lieutenant at the con. Nothing like breaking have you in. Now, the one, the one thing I will say is that none of those shuttles are equipped with, like, Robo claws. arms. Nothing like that. Yeah. Tractor beams? No, the runabout may. Android. <laughs> Data. Uh, check your check your sheets because if it's on the shuttle, I won't have your shuttle. Um, you know. can be fitted for tractor beam. Yes. So the runabout has a tractor beam. Yes, and it has micro torpedoes and it has a phaser bank. Um, and it also has whatever was on the, what was the name of the package I was looking for, on the the, the security thing that got added. Oh, to the, the I don't remember what it's on the. She's actually on this the... This is the Ellen Ochoa that you're talking about? Like, if you look at the right side of that sheet... Yeah. Okay. Now look at the right side of the sheet. There you Down go. Here. Those are the packages. The bottom one should be the combat package that was... Mm -hmm. Oh, the attack. So that's what was added. That's what was added, yes. Oh, okay. So those... Basically, you can have any one of those things, and what he's done is he's made the attack one... The one oh, the I got it. I got it. Same These are potentials. Right. Okay. Right. Those are potentials. What's been put on there is the attack. Okay. Neat. Cool, cool, cool. So, can we get one of the uh, shuttle bays, or not the shuttle bays, the, the Alan Ochoa runabout to use a tractor beam from a safe distance? Can, can it keep up at warp eight? Mm -hmm. No. No. Not a runabout. Okay. The limit is seven, I believe. I think it's less than that. I'll stop What's the. I'm going to say it was five. I don't think it's listed here. It's not. We're gonna say it's five. I'm pretty sure it's five. <laughs> All right. So that probably won't work either. Can we use our own tractor beam and kind of reverse polarity on it to push it away as opposed to pulling things towards where we are? No, because your emitters are gonna be in a different place. Okay. You're basically be trying to throw an emitter through the ship itself. Can we, at the very, I mean, just to reiterate the idea, because we kind of uh, went on break before. Yeah. Uh, we talked about, but like, is there any way to like demagnetize the hull to at least? I know the physical bindings would still be there, but we'd at least possibly be able to neutralize yeah, I, the polarity on it. Yeah, I would be very familiar with the the whole construction. What do I know about how the hull plates are attached? You could potentially do it. It's going to take some work. You're going to need some engineering crew out here. You're going to have to go through the interior hull. You have two options. You can go through the interior, interior hull, hull and get to the exterior hull and find a way to make it work there, or you're on the outside of the ship working on the exterior hull from the outside of the ship. There's too many crew and personnel that I, I don't think I want to be susceptible to that. So I'm trying to think in terms of if we could, because we have mobile force field emitters mm -hmm. could conceivably basically seal off the conference room using force fields. Um, to be clear, those force field emitters aren't designed for quantum tor or plasma torpedoes. They're not that strong. We don't have anything that's strong enough to hold that off. But would it be strong enough to withhold the amount of force it would take to detach that portion of the wall? So essentially make that area open to space and use the Yeah, if we just breach, mm -hmm. if we I just mean, cut it off. Control the breach, yeah. Let's try that and then fortify as many shields as we can or, you know, plan for this breach, basically. My concern is that if we create that breach in the time it takes us to create it, would we set off the explosive device? Do you think it would be worth it? Uh, any other ideas? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the device I mean, is increasing in intensity anyway, I think. Mm -hmm. We're yes, facing a risk. In intensity. Yeah, okay. we're facing a risk either way. Yeah. All right. Do it. Um, skeleton crew, I want both security and engineering personnel. Um, let's set up those emitters. And can you come up with uh, a controlled explosion that would take that piece of the hull out in one go? I mean, yeah. 
Yes. 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 Okay, then let's do that. Okay, do we have a plan? I guess so. What is the plan? I want to set up uh, force field emitters, uh, basically as many as we can cram in the space around the conference room. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we're going to seal off the conference room. The ready room. The conference room is where it, it's is the wall it's attached to. Yes. No, it's the ready room. room. Ready room. It's the ready room. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, so it's the captain's office. That's yes. even better. Yeah, super personal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Neat. That's also a smaller space. That's actually a little bit better. Oh, good. Uh, so, but that means that we have more interior walls we can put. So basically, I want to set up those uh, force fields on the opposite side of the walls involved, um, as much as possible. Uh, so basically, right inside the bridge, right inside the conference room, which I think probably abuts it. Um, and then um, just basically seal that off. We're also going to just completely seal off the bridge since we're not using it. And um, if we can get uh, demolitions in there, they obviously will need to be, let's put them in spacesuits just in case. Uh, but hopefully, well, we have to get them out before it goes. Uh, can I prepare the ship for if we are able to detach it? We immediately take evasive. Absolutely. We're prepared to take evasive actions, Please. expecting for it to I like that Explode very much. Right. Yes. Get away from whatever that explosion radius is going to look like. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to do that as an extended work track. And we're going to do one step at a time. Okay. See what we can do. done. First breakthrough is going to be whether you can get these things in place. So, uh, resistance on this is going to be two. Okay. Actually, we'll do resistance on this since you're inside the ship right now doing this in a really contained thing. We'll do resistance one. Okay. So, resistance is going to be one. Um, you've got your engineering team with you working on this right now? Yes, small team. Small team. Yes. So let's do control and engineering. Yeah. And I also just want to be clear the small team is not going to include Deleron because if I get myself blown up, I want him in engineering. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> control and uh, engineering, difficulty one. <laughs> Ship assist? Yeah. Not a ship assist on no. this, but I'll let you do uh, engineering team assist Can with I like assist? Delaran or somebody. We'll let somebody roll for Delaran. Yeah, you assist. Can I assist? Are you in there with him? No, I you're on, you're on, the, bridge. on the bridge. Yeah. You're okay. at home. And does anybody want to be in there with her assisting? I would. I the way. am. You're, you're there. Your you're there right doing right your own thing. I mean, I'm there yeah. doing my own thing, but I'm there. You're there. Yeah, well, let's say, let's use Deloran's stats for I'll be, whoever in case the other. Gets uh, yeah, I'll, I'll roll up. for Deloran. Yeah. Okay. I'll, be on, I'll be on standby in case any. Yes, Deloran's Deloran not there, there, though. It's not Deloran, but what we're going to do is just use his stats yeah, yeah. for we'll the rest of the engineering team that I've got with stats should be in there somewhere. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Control um, and engineering? Uh, control and engineering, difficulty of one. Assist just rolls one. Yep. Complication. <laughs> <laughs> no. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, complication. That's what keeps this game fun, y'all. What was the what was the difficulty? One. Okay, well I just got two. Okay. So that earns us a momentum, right? Uh, that'll In, earn you a momentum. Can Unless we then spend two momentum to get rid of that complication? Yes. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I like that plan. Fair enough. Uh, unfortunately, though, you weren't able to make any headway with the task. Resistance is two, or resistance is one, so you can make one. Wait, you wait, wait, succeeded wait. in the task, right? Yeah. I succeeded. Okay, roll your challenge dice. I'm sorry, on your discipline. Okay, and then remind me what the challenge dice is. That's the discipline. Discipline plus two. So that's five, four, five, six, seven. So, sorry, I was confused. Yeah. It's all okay. good. That's where the resistance Complication. Comes yes. Five? Okay. Five and three of those are affected. That means nothing. Okay. And with resistance one, that is not a breakthrough. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, you're able to start working on it, but it's taking you longer than expected to get everything positioned. It is a small space, and all of your team working together are struggling to get through that. Um, what are you doing during this? Because your part of the plan is to blow off a chunk of the ship. Mm-hmm. Okay. How are you going to do that? I mean, I'm assuming that we've got... We have explosives. In yeah. Oh, you have explosives. Yeah. Sure. Explosives. Do I... But I'm, I'm also assuming that you have to get to a certain point in order for me to set up... 
Um, oh, BT dub, 10 intervals. Okay. Before the thing goes off. Can you just say all the stuff that we know about it again? Just real uh, quick? There are 10 intervals, so you are in a time crunch. Resistance is two, maybe one, depending on what you're doing, if you can justify it. Um, I don't think I'm going to tell you the magnitude or the number of work. What's the magnitude again? That's the number of breakthroughs, breakthroughs you need. we need. Okay. Is there still time to just send somebody out there? You can. Um, Everything's on the table. <laughs> I mean, we could also just as a backup send a shuttle out. I would actually like to. Oh, do no, that. we can't because the shuttle can't go it. No, right. yeah. no, no, not an option. The only other option is someone basically an EVA with a. They can't just blow it up. If they blow it up, it'll. I mean, does anybody, would anybody have any sort of background in being able to dis, to disable this? Right. I think you are probably the most likely person <laughs> <laughs> who knows how to defuse a bomb. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, I mean, I don't have anything mechanically, but a, yeah, a I don't, I don't I have any, I, I don't have anything, I think, um, I think it's either a me or Mendron, um, and I could Go. What are my John's focuses? Oh God. Guys. Send in, send in the secondary characters out. I am just exploring out. all the options. I want I mean, data. Yeah, this Nothing that will work at all. Psych okay. Psychopathy, crime scene investigation, mm -hmm. long range wrong. Again, long range. I hope we have a mission where we get to use that. <laughs> right? That sounds I very mean, cool. This could be that mission. He sounds disposable. No. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. No one is disposable. We, first off, we just started him up. We just upgraded him. So no, he's not. Like we just. Okay. Oh yeah, remind me what you upgraded him to, because I didn't put that on the sheet. Um, he's security five, science two. So security we actually five. just made him worse. <laughs> for this purpose. <laughs> for, for this. this. For this, yes. Uh, I mean, he's still better at And science. you changed somebody else, too. You changed uh, Nelson. Nelson, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you get Nelson to? For um, con? I've got it written down. Yeah. Yep. Four con, three command. Three command. Took one off command. Okay. Okay, so what's plan, y'all? And we just used, I just used two of those intervals, yes. right? Yes, so you have eight intervals remaining. And that was four, five work total, four work total. Four work total. Right, we need more momentum. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's a plan. What are you doing in all this? I don't know how I can help. Run scans on it. I'll, I'll yeah. use sensors on it to see if that helps. You can do a sensor sweep on there. Who knows, maybe it'll help. Scan yeah, maybe there's weakness. more data. Yeah, and I just don't know about it. I More data never does. I think having things. two plans, and one is the backup, and I think blowing the ship up is the backup plan. That's my thought. That's my instinct. Blowing our ship. I up? mean, blow. Yeah, I think blowing exploding our, up. exploding part Do of our. Do you have ship a better plan A? It turns out it's me. Going outside. Do you think you can do it? How much science does dis dis disabling this involve? Just do a sensor sweep. Okay. Would it be possible? Hey, yeah, Captain, you like, roll for with air sensors for to the blow ship? out the portions, twelve out the hull without like not a fire explosion, but a pressure explosion. 12? Well, basically, what we would be one, doing one, is one did you need one or two? Using the demolition. Yeah. To, um, it says three for sensor sweep. But we'd be using the explosives basically uh, to make a hole, which what, would then we're not in do that. It's con here. controlled oh, demolition. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll let you get by with. Uh, Let's see what the, the sensor, two. what the sensors give us. You can spin them. Oh, you don't have a minute. You can give me yeah. threat to reroll something if you want. Give me threat. Yeah, I'll reroll. Okay. Oh, die. Shit. There you go. Here we go, yes. two. Oh, there so you go. One, so now so it's you're going to have three. See, that's worth it. Does that give us momentum? That'll get you momentum, yes. Okay. We'll make that two, so sweet, I'll give you one momentum, momentum on there. And what do we learn? Um, you have learned that. Um, I'm going to say everything that I want to say. Hey, 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 hey. 
Um, you've learned through the sensor that the design of this, you're able to figure out that the design of this has been modified so that it is a very directional explosion. It's not going to be a okay. generalized thing. It's supposed to point like mm -hmm. gears into the ship. Bam, go straight into the ship. Um, so this is very, very directional and would cause... Is this indicative point. of any particular group's tactics? Um... Uh, how do I want to... Plasma torpedoes are traditionally favored by Romulans. Yep. But this modification, I guess, is what I was... No. It's hard to say. Okay. That's probably the closest thing you're going to get out of that, is that if it's a plasma torpedo-like device... Well, 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 well. Another reason for me to dislike Romulans. <laughs> <laughs> is there any way to... Knowing what we know about it being more directionally charged, is there any way that we can use either any of our stuff to, like manipulate the direction of the blasts. And then like, if we can control its explosion. Direct it outwards. Yeah. Yes, instead of inwards. So it's along the same vector, but it would be. Facing out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're at Reverse the, the polarity point. of the neutron flow, essentially. We're at the point where we're debating what to do so much that time is starting to continue to progress. So we yep. need to start doing stuff. Um. That's not to shoot down any additional yeah. theories. I'm throwing out ideas. Like, While they're working on stuff, I'm just like, oh, now that we know that information, I'm just going to throw right. it out there. I'm just like, hey, is there a way to do that? Because that's but not like, my field. If you're doing an EVA, let's do an EVA. I just have a question. Sure. Do EVAs involve science or engineering or con? Not really. I'm Does just, disabling a bomb require any of those things? Not really. You can justify using your security stat instead for that, I would think. In the same way that, like, you decrypt. I mean, disabling a bomb, I could justify a security. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, yeah. Okay. And my special Well, Captain, what do you think? I'm very reluctant to have you go out there and assume that much risk. Um, but we'd have to send someone. But we do have to send someone. Are you up for the task? Yes. Let's go. I'd like to volunteer to accompany and assist her. If something should happen and she needs to be pulled back in. Right. If something should happen and she needs to be pulled back in, I need you at a safe distance behind whatever, you know, force field shields that you're able to generate to keep yourself safe. But keep a distance, keep an eye out, and make sure that your medical team knows what to do with your body if something happens. Send word back home to mom and put George in charge. Yeah, is that, that, risk, you, is that risk you want to take as well? Keep yourself. I think she's going to be more secure if someone's out there watching her back. And I do have a, at least a little bit of experience. With, I mean, not under these extreme circumstances, but. All right, go. Is, is, this, is she in an EVA or just in a suit? She should be in an EVA, right? Should be in an EVA. Yeah. Is that what we were talking about? Because it's outside the vehicle. Is there yes. anything I would like to assist if I can, if I'd be better or if I'm better on help on the bridge? Do you have focuses in EVA? Oh, well, that sounds pretty handy. You go instead. <laughs> <laughs> you remain. Uh, Do me a favor. I will be on standby. Try to keep some portion of the hole between you and what she's doing. Will do. Are you sure you want to do this? Captain, it's your call. I would much rather we. Have we exhausted all the options to try to revert the directionality of the explosion? All right, I'm going to take an interval officer down to seven. Oh, God. Yeah. Is the answer to that yes? Yes! There's Just a, do there's, something! There's no, there's, it's not possible. In the meantime, I want the security team still putting up that controlled demolition. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a security team putting up controlled demolition. You're doing an EVA. Are you continuing to try to put up the shields and everything? Like oh, that? yeah, I'm putting up the shields anyway. Like, okay. any little bit will help a little. It's the backup. Well, the shields, the, the force field's going up no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's roll the EVA right now. For the EVA, let's do a fitness and security. And you're going with? Yeah. The studio as well. Um, two, three successes if my one is lower than the uh, discipline, yes? Yes. And when I think you get to roll two. You only roll one for the assist. Oh, okay. sorry. sorry I'm assist. sorry. My apologies. I thought you just had oh. to roll our own. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. You're going to be around, but for the initial thing, let's do an assist. If you have anything where you're taking the lead on the actual action, we'll have your role too, and then the assist over there. So for okay. right now, since you're on the lead on that, you'll be the primary role. But you got three. We're going to put a difficulty two because you're doing EVA at warp eight because uh, you're able to exit the ship and get out to the exterior hull. It's kind of pretty, actually, but. Holy crap. Do I get a momentum? Also, who do we yes. have at con if she's out there? Can we just establish that? Who do you that? have at con? Nelson. Nelson? Nelson back? Yep. Okay. Nelson's on con. Okay. Okay, uh, you are out. Let's go back to engineering and see how you're doing. Give me another check on that real quick. Um, what am I actually doing right now? It's Also, we got a momentum back? You got a momentum back. Okay. Um, so I can spend one momentum to bring the interval down, or is it two? One momentum for the interval down. All right, I'm doing that. Okay. Um, all right, and you said it's inside and engineering? Uh, no, control and engineering. Control and engineering? Mm -hmm. Okay. Inside. Uh, it's two successes, okay. but I don't think can. No, this isn't shipboard tactical system, so. That's enough. We're going to have. That's Okay. Fine, that'll get you that. So roll through challenge dice and see how much work you got on this. And what'd you say? It's discipline plus two. Discipline. So seven. That's five. Six, seven. I lose my ability to count. It's all the pressure. It's That's what you like to hear from you, Junior. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I get any momentum out of that? Out no. of the roll? Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then I lose one for. Can I give you a threat to re roll dice? Yeah. Yeah. Two more. All right. There's a breakthrough. Yeah, you got a breakthrough on here. So what did I just say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's t t the six. Okay. So you've gotten one breakthrough out of the deal. Um, you're able to get the shields up as best you can. You and your team are able to get the shields up in there as best you can. So. It is separating the relatively abandoned bridge and sections as much as they can, but it is plasma okay. torpedo. So back to yeah. you. You have made your way on the hull of the Mazu You're such a with, your, with your new Lieutenant Sheck right behind. As you approach the, uh, I guess you'll call it a mine that is attached to the side of the Mazu. What's the plan? Um. The plan is to see if there is a way to disable it. Okay, so you want to just kind of check it out and see where we're at with everything. Um, yes. Inside security difficulty. <sighs> you're at warp eight. You're outside the ship. Also, is this counting towards the work track as well, or is it separate? Oh, this is going to be part of the work track. Okay. Yeah, so right. where are we on the intervals, then? Does that mean we're at? You are at six, depending on what we do with this. We'll see where we're at. Six, okay. So uh, let's do insight and security difficulty of, I want to say on this one, difficulty of one. Okay. Do I get? You can do I don't know assist. if you want me to. Is it because I have 10? Is it worth it? Uh, Try it. It always right. is worth okay. it. Uh, one success. Uh, oh, double success! Yeah. All right, so build two more momentum in that thing. Uh, go ahead and roll some work. Is it two momentum? Uh, what's yep. my work? Two momentum. Discipline yeah. plus two? Discipline plus yeah. two. Engineering? No. Security. 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 So seven. So seven. I was about to say it's probably seven. <laughs> and seven. Oh, no. Okay. I need to give you a threat to reroll. <laughs> uh, we can actually use this to Oh, uh, no. I would like to use a momentum to okay. reroll. Okay. Go for it. Holy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was very bad. That's a Cindy roll. <laughs> still not, still not, um, I would now like to give you a threat to reroll. Uh, I don't, is that repeatable? I, I, don't, I don't think, think that's repeatable. repeatable. Okay. Then yeah. never mind. Um, then we've got a one, so two, three, double. four, five, six, oh. one effect. Six with... Okay, so six total though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that actually gives us a breakthrough because it's only resistance one. Resistance two. Ooh. No, this was resistance one. Difficulty one. Difficulty, Difficulty one. one. Resistance, resistance two. two. Yep. Okay. Pragmatism three. And is that? Is that? 
But one charisma and roll a two seven. Spin. Here it is nine. You have four left. <laughs> uh, you can definitely see the power spiking on this machine as you're going through. Stop it! Stop spiking, Stop machine! It. Why are you spiking? <laughs> Sorry, Sydney. Sydney takes it first. I'm so stressed. You don't have to take it first. I'm so stressed. If it all blows up, you just roll up new characters. Right. It's really fun. What's next? <laughs> if I die, I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> for the record. I don't want to. It's for I'm not. I feel like that's a threat. I know you that... haven't prompted for me, but you gained a threat. A... I do. <laughs> you have a lot of threat back there. I do have so much And I just threat. pulled a little bit from it and sent it out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a threat, it's a promise. It's a promise. Yes. Oh, it's a promise. <laughs> nice. I like that. What's next, y'all? You can either keep working on your stuff, we can focus on being outside, whatever you guys do. Can I tell the rest of the ship to uh, evacuate? We are you want to abandon ship? I we evacuated the ship. Into into abandoned abandoned ship. ship, basically. We, 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 get to we the... would be abandoning ship at warp. Yeah, or we get blowed up in warp. Well, it's a contained. It, it wouldn't take out the entire ship. It would just take out a chunk. What we did was we sent everyone away from the chunk that would get blown up. Yes. We'd be in a bad, bad place. Right. So you're saying that all the rest of the personnel that could be hurt, they're no longer in. You have warp. moved. Yes, they've all been okay. all evacuating right. to more safe areas. Never mind. Ship. Yes. Can I do another census scan? But this time, uh, on the hull, to give. More information to uh, Morganth and. Uh, I mean, what she really Sorrow's needs right now is more information on the device. Right. Okay. Can I go down I, to I where she is with the hull and assist personally? Like outside the ship? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Go for it. Suit up. Suit up. Do the thing. Okay. Uh, go ahead and run a sensor sweep, and what I'll what I'll let you do is, if you're successful on it, we'll give them an advantage on their next task. Okay. Respectfully, like Captain. That plan. What would okay. you do? Whatever I can do to help. Two. Uh, can you roll for the ship again, Captain? Yeah. Twelve. Sensor sweep. Two yes. successes. Four. Beautiful. All right. Give yourself uh, one momentum on that. Oh, that's three. 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 Wow. Three on that. Wow, Captain, exactly. as chief medical officer, I if have to advise against. If this ship against... needs a new captain, then let that be the case. It seems like everything is kind of moving us toward that. So if I'm hastening fate, fine. But this needs to be fixed. The and apparently needs, we've lost a lot of time dithering about it. The yep. ship needs you more than it needs me. And I can help her. The ship needs a captain. Captains are in supply. I'm going to go help her. You need to help the bodies that are going to be resulting from this. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, so you were able to continue sensing, running your sensors on the thing. Yeah. Um, you're able to see that there is actually um, a weakness in how is it attached to the hull. Um, you're able to point her in a direction to look through. If you if you look at the aft section, where it would be aft on the ship, if you look at that, it appears that there is a weakness there that you might be able to take advantage of, okay. if you will. I created an advantage. Thank you. Yay. The word advantage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, based on this, I would like to, um, I think, I think I would like to first see if I can just say, I would like to disable it. Okay. And I would like to, if that doesn't work, I would like to Detach. detach it. Okay, I think in order to see if you're disabled, you're going to have to kind of remove exterior shielding. So let's say that your next task is going to be to get into the workings of said mine. Okay. And let's spend a momentum for that work task to... Lower the interval. Okay. So lower the interval so it'll only be one. So you only have four left. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Are we saving right. that advantage for the detachment or can she still use it? On can the I use story? that towards? You can use it later if you'd like. Okay. Um, whatever you do, it's going to decrease the difficulty by one. That's going to okay. be the advantage on this. Okay. For getting into the meat itself, let's say that it's a difficulty two. Okay. I would like to buy dice. Okay. Yep. Buy dice. Okay. Difficulty yeah. two. Uh, let's do control and security. Uh, can I roll? No. No. <laughs> if you give me a threat. What did you end up rolling? 20? Yeah. Oh, yes, then yeah, give him a threat and re-roll. <laughs> threat? Okay. Yeah. Okay, success. Okay. What do we got? Um, I have three successes. So four total. So four, four successes. So two momentum 
sort of thing. You are able to uh, pry open the exterior housing of the mine and see the actual guts itself um, and see how it's laid out. Um, we'll say because of his scanning, yeah. you're able to see that it was kind of done in a rush job and you can see that because of that, there are ways you'll be able to manipulate that to your advantage in trying to disarm it. Okay. Uh, would you like to go ahead and do that? Yes. Or do you want to pass on to her? There's only three there's intervals left. I don't think there's anything else I can do inside. Yeah. Okay. So then let's go ahead and do it again. This time, let's do, let's do another control and security check. Okay. Difficulty two. Uh, I would like to buy another dice. Okay. All right, here you go. Uh, is this another work track? It's another work track. Let's spin that on the interval. Okay. Oh, we never did. Oh, we the, didn't. We, we didn't yeah, do the charge. Yeah, roll your work on that too. The yeah. work, yeah. Oh. Should I put, the put that. In? Put put the. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Put, stay there. Oh. That's better. Um, How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, two effect. Okay. And it was. What's the resistance on that one? The resistance was two. Should I spend the momentum? Do we need to? Did that succeed? It's or? not a breakthrough. Okay. Yeah. yeah we gotta go breakthrough fast. is five. Go fast. Well, one more effect. That's what we need. So That's a breakthrough. Okay. Um, do some quick math here. So it's two breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quick math. So uh, you were able to, uh, like I said, take everything off, and in that you'll see everything. Now let's do the check for disarming itself. Okay. We're going back to control and security on that. Okay. Uh, can we buy an extra die? We can't lower the, oh, the interval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The interval. So that's going to threat. Unless you give me threat. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, I failed. Yeah, but I got four. Okay. Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so that'll bring us two more momentum. Okay. I forgot about my talent on my first roll. What's your talent? In the nick of time, whenever you succeed in engineering your science task as a part of an extended task, you score one additional work for every effect rolled. Oh, interesting. I had three effects on that first Okay, time. cool. So that puts me at, that means my very first one was... Seven? Seven. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Which was another breakthrough. Cool, cool, cool. And then this one was... Something more than six. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we blew it a little bit. That's all right. A little bit. Um, success. Roll your challenge dice. Are you out there with them by now? Mm hmm. Seven, four effects. Okay. All right, seven will give us five more. Yep. Do we want me to spend Oh, did we spend the, the thing for the interval? Did we not. did not because sure. we didn't have enough. We didn't have it. Yeah, we oh, we didn't, didn't have, have it. Have yeah, it. Yeah, we got that momentum from her from okay. roll okay. Unfortunately, okay. you needed two breakthroughs on that last interval, and you just achieved two breakthroughs. Yes. So you are able to, uh, to what, disarm. Disarm. There are connections in there that actually look familiar to you in some of your training and some of your past experience. You are able to disarm this, and the system does go down. But I will say, with all that threat you gave me, I'm going to spend. I'll spend six of them and have a bunch left over. Um, there was, with that disarming, there was a self-defense mechanism of a pulse that radiates out and hits all three of you that are on the hull. Okay. Um, I would like each one of you to give me a fitness and security check to see if you're able to maintain position on the hull. Difficulty of one. You have to roll two this You'll time. roll two, Lauren. Right. Oh, okay. Fail. Fail? Uh, one. Three successes. Three successes? What is equal to the, my score? I'm sorry, what? I roll, I have 12 and I roll Fitness 12. and security, yeah, you're, you've you so got two successes. Two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so two successes. Three successes. Three successes and a fail. Yep. All right. If anybody wants to make an advantage, re would you like to re-roll both of those die? Sure. Well, we, well no, sorry. You can only roll one. You can only roll one. I only yes. need. Which one. You only so. need one. Success. Oh, there yeah. you go. Uh, 
Yes. How many uh, was that? Was this difficulty two? Difficulty one. Difficulty one. Difficulty one. So if I got three, mm -hmm. then I could get two more momentum. Two more momentum. Okay. There you go. The next thing I want to do. You get a momentum. momentum. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to roll to see what kind of damage you guys are taking. Oops. You take pulse damage. Could have been way worse, y'all. Uh, you get hit, but it looks like because of the way you disarmed it, it didn't do that much. But each of you is going to take three stress. Sure. Stress kills, man. Stress kills. <laughs> but the device itself seems to be disarmed and no longer active. Now what? Oh, I need to detach it. Okay, cool. What do you mean seems? Seems to be disarmed. That's, that's, that's GM talk. talk. That's classic GM talk. That's classic yeah. GM talk. <laughs> I just want to make you Please question are... all your life choices. That's all. Yeah, everything's is always it seems. It's just all. It's it appears just to be As far as you can perceive, it is scaring me right now. Nice. It's scaring me. Can we get any kind what of scans on it? I know I'm going okay, yeah, to, yeah, but I scan it again. would yeah. like to take some pictures. <laughs> for souvenirs to send back home. Hey, here's so a bomb. So either oh. if you have a scanning device on you, you can scan it. If you don't, he can scan it. Um, can we? I mean, you have a tricorder. Yeah, you can tricorder. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any of you could tricorder it. Yeah. You could Everybody, try tricorder it. I was There's trying to be. speak up and it wasn't really working with the cacophony here. But was a cough. Yeah, that's fine. Let's all scan. Let's, Let's all, all scan, scan and get as much information as we can here. You guys Roll with a reason yeah. and science check. I'll giant quarter it. All of us with tricorders are reason and science? Yep, everybody reason and science. That's okay. Well, While they're all doing that, I'm going to make sure we get a transporter lock on all three of them. Okay. Fail. Two success, three successes. One success, one complication that I would like to spend a momentum to get rid of. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. And one success and a fail. Okay, there, there's been enough. Um, you guys see that it is definitely disarmed. It is not going to do anything at this point. You also see through that that releasing the magnetic lock on this thing, piece of cake. Okay. It's just going to be pull that wire, you're done. The actual breach in the hull itself, you're going to be able to remove it, but it is going to take a little bit of engineering expertise to go in there and actually kind of patch things up as you go through. We also it. already uh, have that section of the ship completely back. blocked off. Right. Yeah. So these minor breaches that are going to happen upon removing it, not going to be hard. You Just will be able to get remove it this. Off. Let's Okay. Did I Let's get a bring it home. For that? I don't want to get rid of it. I don't either. Let's bring it home. All right. Bring it home. Yeah, um can we safely come out of warp without killing Would you like somebody? to try? No, I want to know. Let's yeah, get you can, you can do that. Okay. 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 We're gonna do we that. can spend a momentum for it. Get that information. I don't want to transport the thing. What was the difficulty on that? Difficulty was going to be one. Okay, so we get two. Because I got three. three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, I want to drop us out of warp so that we can work on this much more safely. Fair enough. <clears throat> yeah, let's go Especially ahead and drop out the crew. Sure. Yeah, drop out of warp. The mine doesn't do anything. You're able to drop out of warp. Everybody seems to be safe and sound. Um, I start breathing again. Good job. Uh, Way to breathe. Uh, right I'll take us out of red alert. Oh, yeah. Put us on yellow <laughs> alert. Yellow alert's a good call. There you yeah. go. Yeah, we're not. We're not all the way out of the woods. But. No. Um, okay, and Captain, you said you want to save that thing. Hell yeah. I am right. setting up like a force field thing right Warren inside King. the airlock. I am so not letting them bring that thing inside my ship. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, no. You, like, you can bring it inside, but, like, I'm keeping it as cordoned off as I can possibly do. I appreciate your safety measures. You do. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I love how hardcore Captain Rawls is getting lately. It's so awesome. It's great. Okay, so we're going to remove this thing. Who's going to actually remove it? Do we need to roll? What are the stats? I'm going to want somebody to roll on it, yeah. What do they need to roll for? We're going to do control and engineering. Oh, okay. I, I probably shouldn't. 13 is me. Yeah. I'm 15. Oh, then oh, yes, congratulations. Oh, Noble yes. can go. <laughs> uh, minus 10. Uh, two, three successes. Well, okay then. Uh, so your control in engineering so. is 15. Do you want to join my team? That's the same as mine. You weren't going to roll? <laughs> wow, what's your oh. background? 
Uh, okay, so you're able to remove it and head it back to the airlock. Uh, getting into the airlock, and you're setting up a force field right in that airlock yeah. immediately. All right, you're in there. It is behind the force field in the airlock. Captain, what's the plan? Uh, I want us to dig in as much as we can to understand how it got here, see if we can get any residual traces on any biosignatures, life signs, whatever. Who is responsible for oh, this? Oh, forensic workup. That's just the work. You did say we were out of work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that if your engineering crew needs to work on the hull, if we screwed it up. Some small patches. Yeah. yeah. Won't, be, won't be bad. We'll, we'll, Easy. We'll do that. Delorean can handle that in his sleep. Cool. Piece of cake. Which and means my... any of the other crew can do that as well. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, you guys want to do some work on this mine then? Let's mine it for information. Hey, oh no, Captain. It happened. So proud of you. There's raw. I do want <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, as long as we're collecting questions, I do want to know where it attached to us in space. Like where in space. Oh, it would it actually us. make contact with us? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's get all those answers. Well, I guess the question is was this placed here by a person mm -hmm. or being, or did we just catch some old like limpet mine? That was just kind of hanging like, out. That left it left over from like a Romulan. I mean, still or away. We stuff. are we are cruising through space that's right on the border of Romulan and, and Klingon we and Federation. Are dragging space. magnetic mine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a chance, but I doubt it. I doubt that's the case. But yeah, looking at it should give us an idea of whether it was sabotage, the fact that it was meant to pierce the ship makes me think it is, mm -hmm. but it could just be an old Romulan mine. Okay. And what were the modifications? Oh, to make it directional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's probably this an old not mine an old that was modified. This is not an old Romulan mine. Or well, it was and it was modified. Do we know that? modified Actually, I, here, and here's what I will say, here's why I, I feel comfortable saying that. It was attached to our ship um, purposefully, and it was uh, it was modified intentionally to um, to blow up the captain's ready room. You're you're most likely correct, but I'd like to be sure. Let's do let's let's do that full By investigation. No, no, right. You have to find. I want to look at it and see. Yeah. Of course. I think you're right. That's but... why we brought it inside. She okay. Good He's asking. Yeah, but, but that, that that's thing. also my point. Like I was looking at it right. in order to dismantle it, and so my judgment call, if I'm allowed to say this, but as you're I was looking at it, you said somebody actually. It was clear that this had been done, and this had been done sloppily. Yes. Okay. If this was re if this was regulation Romulan just out there and we happen to stumble upon it, it would not have been done sloppily. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's fair, right? I think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm thinking it's fair. <laughs> it appears to be correct. <laughs> it seems to be right. It seems. Seems okay. You went out on the hole in can, warp with actually, an explosive device. You get to say whatever you want. Can we now. do this? Can she be looking at the device and I can be looking at our sensor records to see if I can determine at what point mm. it showed up? Uh, sure. Okay. Yes. Let's uh, let's do that for sensor records. Let's do sensor records first. Let us do um, science and reason. Okay. And also, can I get a ship assist on that? Yep. You can get a ship um, assist for okay. ship assist. Uh, let's do sensors. Not great. And, oh, it's, oh no, it's, it's okay. It's fourteen. Let's yeah. do sensors and security for the ship assist. Okay. Sensors and security. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. Success from the that. ship. Uh, so that's four successes. You guys just max out your momentum. You yeah. got lots of momentum right now. Yeah, all right. Um, going through your sensor records, uh, it all seems pretty clean, pretty clean. There was kind of a blip back at Starbase 234. That, that place is our bane. <laughs> Anytime we go there, something bad happens. I'm going to blow that place up. Stupid Starbase. <laughs> What's the nature of the we take like on two mines um, at two three, You actually four. see two blips, if you will. Uh, you dun, see dun, dun. a transporter signature, and then not long after that, another transporter signature that would have been near the exterior hull of the ship. That somebody beamed over, attached it, and then beamed out. It doesn't necessarily mean it was two through... It, it was somebody at 234. Is there, are there any other forensic data that we can get in terms of like um, 
you know, genetic signature. From sensor logs, no. We'll have to roll for something else if you guys want to like do a deep dive on the mine itself. Yeah, since can we I got it in that? custody, yeah, can we do like a deep tricorder? Sure, sure. You wanted to check on that for that? Yeah, I bet, well, I mean, if it's if we're looking for a biological signature. Sure, we'll figure uh, that's let's mine. do reason and medicine. Okay. Let's do difficulty two. Difficulty two, okay. Um, I'm gonna spend a momentum to buy a dice. All right. And would my, okay, well. We'll see. Let's just oh, my focus in xenobiology come in handy here, maybe. Oh, it maybe. should. I would think so. I maybe. Well, okay. if it's let's see. We said reason and medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is fourteen for me. So uh, two successes and oh no, neither. Well, it doesn't matter anyway because neither of them is below my attribute. So two successes. But two successes, yes. Um, there is uh, some foreign DNA. On the outside of the mine itself. Okay. Is it determined? Can, I, Can we, Let's spend a moment. I'm going to spend a moment to <laughs> yeah. more. get a little more information yeah. on there. Yeah. Um, it is actually very similar to stuff that you scanned earlier. Uh, it is virtually identical to Oriani DNA. Oriani. They did declare war. Because so. of you. <laughs> well, it's split. Because I was saving people. The responsibility split. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, I claim some responsibility for that as well. I think there's a lot of responsibility on this yeah, show. There is. Yeah. Let's be honest. Okay. Hmm. Well, it's one thing to say we're at war. It's another thing to openly attack a Federation starship. So I am going to did, thank you guys for doing a rocking job. Keep yeah, trying. To did we finish with the checking on the with the invest with the forensic look at the mine? I'm going to let them continue. Okay. Doing okay. That. That's what that Everyone is. Everyone, keep doing what you're doing, please. I'm going to go talk to Admiral Davis. I am overdue to talk to one of the admirals. He's the admiral I want to talk to because he's the one you normally talk to. Yeah, he's the one who's kind of been by my side. He's he's my OG. So I'm going to talk to him. Give him an update on all of the stuff that has been happening. But please, keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to okay. the battle bridge. Understood. Yes. Uh, everybody staying on the battle bridge, or do you want him up as the main bridge at this point? Is the engineering team done patching up the thing? I mean, yeah. And it's the captain's mm -hmm. call. Does it seem like they've finished? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like they're done. It seems that it way. Seems. If, it I, if I go check yeah. their work, does it look acceptable? It appears sure. to be good. <laughs> yeah, it seems fine. <laughs> I love Let's you all. remain. <laughs> you're a mean person. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> Let's remain in yellow alert and bring you? everybody back to the yeah. main bridge all right, with the, the caveat alert. that things are in a seemly fashion. Right. It's seemly. Captain. If it's all the same to you, I'm going to keep a force field up around the uh, ready room just for. Sounds just for great. A little bit more. Sounds like a great idea. Seems like a great idea. So you want to call Admiral Davis? Yeah, I'm going to go to a place that is not the ready room, maybe on the far end of where the ready room was, out of superstition, I don't know, but just some sort of like let's private see, little alcove see. room uh, to open a secret channel. Phone room. Phone room. Which one did we decide room? we were Okay, you can actually do it in your quarters if you want to be super private. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds okay. perfect. So open up a secure channel. Uh, moments later, Admiral Davis pops in. Captain Rawl, back on... Uh, Back on duty, I see. Back on duty, and the hits keep on coming, Admiral Davis. We, on our way to continue uh, our mission in pursuit of Dr. Jennifer Prescott, uh, had to deal with a a plasma torpedo that had been mine. modified to. Was it a plasma torpedo? It was, it was a mine. It was like a torpedo. It was a mine, but it was like a torpedo. So same okay, thing. a plasma yeah. mine, an explosive that had been placed on the hull of our bridge, directly outside of my ready room. Thankfully, our team has successfully disabled and are doing a full sensor and forensic sweep on it. But wanted to keep you updated on everything that's going on with the caveat that um, if you can deliver an abridged version of this to any other admiralty, that would be helpful as my ability to communicate fully and frequently is compromised by the events that we continue to encounter throughout this mission. In the middle of this conversation, you see him grab a bottle of whiskey, <laughs> start pouring. Like, I do the same in my quarters. <laughs> yeah, that seems, that seems fair. <laughs> There's almost like this mutual like. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that a mine 
was attached to the hull of the Mazu? According to our sensor readings, um, there was foreign DNA of the Oriani oh, variety and a beaming signature that demonstrated that had beamed on and away in order to attach it magnetically and physically to the hull, directly outside my ready room. And you now, said a plasma mine. A plasma mine. At Starbase 234. It occurred at Starbase 234. Uh, so we are very happy to see that in our rear view, at least for now. Um, but I wanted to keep you apprised that we are headed towards Starbase 105 in pursuit of our original mission. I have to admit that, uh, oh, and we also have a new uh, lieutenant on con. A Vulcan seems very sharp, dove right into the thick of it with us today. Uh, so glad to have her on board. That being said, it is impossible to think that there is no Starfleet engagement in terms of how frequently we are being beset and sabotaged. I am not sure what the appropriate channels are going to be here for this, but that is all that I'm comfortable to say at the moment. Maybe it's due to the fact that I had experienced a traumatic attack and I'm still feeling a little bit emotionally off kilter. Maybe that is explaining the paranoia. Um, let the record show that I could be suffering from paranoia, that this could be suspect information. Taken into account. Uh, I don't think it's suspect because you all have been through a lot over the past few weeks and now there's Oriani putting mines on your ship apparently. That's what I'm being told. Mm -hmm. And drink. Is that going to be our new game for all? <laughs> oh yes. We this call it the coping game. It's a great game. Yeah. I'm really playing it a lot lately with this. Um, you said you have a new senior staff as well? Yes, that's right. Lieutenant Tshek. Lieutenant Tshek. Uh, you said Vulcan? Yes. Interesting. And what do you think of this lieutenant? You said, you said she dove in. She dove in. She expressed the appropriate amount of concern at our... Uh, briefing and getting up to speed after my accident and everybody getting back into action cautioned any deviation from Starfleet protocols. I would expect nothing less from a Vulcan new to the ship. <laughs> sure. Um, but when it came time to actually diffuse and remove the mine, uh, she played an integral role and um, seems to be conducting herself very well. Okay, I'm going to do some research on this. I find it interesting that you suddenly have a new senior staff and then there's a mine placed on I'm glad ship. that stood out to you. I think I've become so accustomed to having crew just sent my way that it probably didn't even cross my mind. It's the opposite of paranoia. Fair, fair enough. Let me be paranoid for you a little bit on that one. Jeez. It does seem odd that they uh, assign someone to you and then there's a mine placed upon your ship. Um, but you feel like this Vulcan is trustworthy? So far, so good. But... Uh, no telling. That's the only in the thick of it that she's kind of been with us for. So, Captain, I uh, you have a very talented security officer, Betazoid, correct? Indeed. Uh, recommendation that maybe the security officer has a conversation with said Vulcan. I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, just allow me to be paranoid for you. Um, I will say the Oriani have cut off all diplomatic ties with the Federation. Um, Starfleet Intelligence has mm, evidence of traffic um, with elements within the Romulan Empire. Um, so maybe this is going to be a little more fuel to that fire. Uh, I will pass some of this information along to the Joint Chiefs um, because that does seem something that can be very concerning. Uh, I can tell you right now that they're not going to be too concerned. The Romulans are actually doing some other things that are interesting right now. But uh, I do want to at least make the Joint Chiefs aware that this is potentially an issue. Understood. Um, how's the Mazu? Holding up decently well, despite the fact that Captain Archer put us through our paces on our way out <laughs> of the Starbase. Um, and we've got a few uh, hull breaches that we're in the process of repairing for removing the mine. Nothing severe, though. We don't need to send you back to base. I'm sorry? They're very small breaches. Yes. Uh, nothing that we're aware of at this time, but as soon, um, if you have any additional 
upgrades or things of that nature that we could use at this time, we are we will take what we can get. Uh, I'm not sure I can handle that. Uh, do you say where did you say you're off to at this point? Starbase 105. 105. I'll see if I can get something for you 105, but no guarantees on that one. They're kind of out on the outskirts. There's a lot of resources being That's redirected. Fine. As long as you're not sending us a plasma mine, we are Golden Admiral Davis. I'm not going to send you any plasma mines, and I'll probably keep Archer out of here for a while. He's a great captain, but he's, I don't know, he's Archer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the name to up to. Well, Raul, how are you feeling? I am feeling like I have been since being aboard the Mazu. This is the new normal. Confused. Yeah, confused. Little susan of paranoia. Uh, some stress <laughs> that has bubbled over into a nice frothy calm somehow. Kind of like when you stayed up too late and you're so tired, you get that second wind. Great. Do you have additional leads on Prescott? Nothing at this time beyond what we're going to, uh, th that's why we're going to Starbase 105. I'll let right. you know if and when we know more. Sounds good. Roll, watch your back. Um, I say watch your back because I will give you a little inside information uh, just from the Oriani. Um, there have been some heated conversations about the Oriani incident and the aftermath of that. And there are factions within the Oriani government who blame the Mazu for a direct challenge to their way of life. They are a very uh, theocratic society and you have apparently affronted their way of life and their religion and there are some people there that are not happy about it. I can certainly understand how that might be the case. Given that information, is a high-profile ship and crew like the Mazu the most qualified to be pursuing the Dr. Prescott mission? Well, here's the thing, Raul. You weren't high-profile until maybe a week ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Um, this mission has already been assigned to you by my superior, so I don't have the authority to take you away from that, but I understand your concerns and I will bring it up to Admiral Grossich at our next available opportunity. Appreciate it. Of course. Here for you if you need me. Uh, anything else I can do for you? Nope. That'll be it. Captain, in the past few weeks, you have been through hell and you're coming back through it. And I can see it in your eyes, too. But a whole... There's a reason I wanted you commanding a ship. Because if anybody can handle it, you can. Don't forget that. I know it's tough, but you can handle it better than most of the people I know in Starfleet. So stay with it. That means a lot coming from you. Thank you. Absolutely. Cheers. Don't die. <laughs> <laughs> it's against regulation. <laughs> Archer out. We're all out. What's next? Uh, I want to take her on ships because we still haven't got a chance okay. to do that. Cool. Are we able to go to warp now or no? Is the whole captain? What's the whole fixed? Yeah, is the whole yeah, the whole the whole essentially good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's resume course. Okay. Get back on warp. Back to warp eight on way to one hundred and five. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're on way uh, to well, I need to run a power restore. Or has there been a scene change? We'll say a scene change. Okay. You're at full power. So we're back to. Oh, let me, let me see what happens. Pilot. So, uh, you, going to you, got, you got what's your name? Who, Nelson? Nelson can take over and roll. Okay. Well, no, I'm doing the roll for the power thing. Oh, yeah, I was talking about the autopilot. Yeah. That looks good. Oh, wait, what is it? It's per we got some effect? folks who can take the con if it needs to be. That means power, not spent. So, three effect. Uh, so, so it's five off. Okay, yep. or ten. Cool. Oh, All right, okay. so taking her around to see the ship? Yeah. So, uh, I'll just give you the basic tour. The tactical thing, uh, um, I don't know if we're going to role play it out too much. It's just basically <laughs> because we have the runabout and we have the extra shuttles, the mm -hmm. plan is to be able to use those to, uh, when we're in battle, 
uh, with these different battle tactics that we have, which I'll show you or send to you later. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also why the, we have need of and probably why you were assigned to the ship was so we could have another comms officer. Um, and uh, yeah, is there anything else? Is there in, in the event of um, a battle, would you mm. see me being taking one of the runabout or staying on the ship for well, tactical purposes? I don't know your capabilities. Have you, uh, do you have much experience with shuttles or runabouts? Uh, I do have some. Uh, I believe I might be more of use on the ship, but... Okay. Well, uh, likely it's wherever your rotation okay. is. Uh, if you are at the con, we wouldn't take you off it to pilot the runabout. Yes. But uh, if you were on secondary duty, um, then likely that's where you'd end up. Well, I'll be available at your disposal if the issue ever arises. Well, do you have any uh, questions for me? Now that you've seen the ship and been through uh, a rather intense experience on within the first few hours of stepping on board? Yes, it's, it was quite unexpected. Mm. And I understand you're fairly new to Starfleet, is that correct? No. Uh, I'm fairly new to uh, being on a starship. I've, uh, I see. I was, I've been part of Starfleet for a while, but in the diplomatic corps. Well, it's, it'll be refreshing to get a new perspective. Uh, I've worked under very long-term XOs, so maybe you'll have a fresh approach? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you that my dream was always to get an assignment such as this, and now that uh, I have it, it's been much more difficult than I expected from a diplomatic standpoint. And my expectations were that the training Starfleet provided for those in command would carry me through any difficult situation, just to follow the book. And have you found it has not? Less often than I expected. Sometimes you have to do the right thing for that moment in order to save lives or protect someone. And then you have to deal with the fallout as an officer. Uh, I would say that 99% of the time Starfleet has it right. And then 1% of the time Ish. A commander has to make his own decision. I don't know if that's the type of uh, XO you dealt with in the past, or if it was all by the book. Well, my last ship was very much not by the book. I wouldn't like to get into too much detail on that, but the people who have uh, it wasn't exactly the right decisions either. But I would, I'll have to see what instances you're talking about, that 1% that you refer to. Well, I'll tell you. Um, the captain was kidnapped. And in order to find out who she had spoken to, and who the most likely, likely suspects were, I had our security officer break into her private messages to give us the lead that we needed to find out where she was. And it worked. It is not a decision I took lightly, but it is a decision I made in the moment, and I still stand by it. And your captain was okay with that? Well, she... By doing so, we prevented her from having her symbiont ripped out of her, so yes, I, she's okay with it. Well, I see. I was not aware of that. Granted. Uh, it was an extreme situation, and I don't think anyone 
would dispute me blowing past protocol in that moment. However, everything I did after that, I stand by. Let's see. To be honest, I, I'm not sure how I will react in, if faced with such a situation. I'm not sure I would have made the same call. I'm not sure if that would have been to the captain's detriment or not. I, but I do wish to glow, grow with this ship and I have seen that sometimes protocols can, following protocols, mm, maybe can be, maybe isn't a dark red line, you know, maybe there is some wiggle room, but I'm interested, uh, I guess we'll have to see with the, this crew. I mean, it has to be done. Those decisions, like I said, cannot be taken lightly and must uh, be weighed against the situation. Ignoring protocol is uh, more dangerous going your own way every time a decision must be made, whether it's difficult or not. That's what leads to piracy. That's what leads to rogue ships. Yes. And that I cannot abide. Well, thank you for your honesty. You, you'll find nothing but honesty on the ship, maybe to a fault. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. And let's get you back to the con. Captain, you want to do anything? Yeah, I'd like to uh, locate Morganth. Okay. It's an easy calm. Captain Morganth. Morganth. Captain Morganth, report to my quarters, please. Yes, Captain. You're there. Poof. It's like you're expecting it. Boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. She pops up right behind you. Um, I invite her in, make sure that everything is kind of like secure in the room, quiet. I wanted to thank you for doing an excellent work today. Uh, I plan on making a formal commendation to Starfleet for your help. And I was hoping that you could take some time to talk to our newest crew member to check, see if you can get a read on her, especially given the fact that we had um, a status meeting in which uh, Privacy and trust are of utmost importance for us. I hope you can appreciate um, the request that I'm making in light of that. Captain, may I speak freely? Yes. Uh, I can appreciate this request. I think that it will prove difficult. Well, how's that? Hmm. To check as a Vulcan. And from what I can tell, Tshak has barriers. Yes, I understand. Um, now, I'm happy to have a conversation. Then by all means. But I think that it will be only verbal. I understand. Um, do what you can. I'll appreciate any insight that you may have, given the fact that you are not only gifted in your own powers, but chief of security on the ship. So even if only in that role, um, I've come to expect nothing but the best from you. Thank you, Captain. Uh, dismissed. Thank you. Can I have that combo now? Uh, sure. Cool. I'm assuming that Tshak is not doing a job. <laughs> I think that you can probably get to her. You can have somebody relieve at con or whatever you need to do to have the conversation. Yeah. Um, and I imagine that we are just going over security. The reason for this meeting is that we are going over security protocols. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
P.S. The reason for this meeting is that we are going over security <laughs> protocols. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Call in. Um, mid scene. <laughs> We're going over security protocols. Um, and I hope that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. Hey, that's how security <laughs> protocols work. Nice. Yes, Lieutenant Morgan. That, that was some very nice work today. Uh, same to you, Lieutenant. Um, I applaud your coolness under pressure. I applaud yours. Yes, thank you. Is today's experience, was it expected at all? In the sense of uh, expect your experience. A, well, I'm, I'm not asking if you a, expected a Romulan mine, but... Um, it was quite unexpected. I, I have to say, during our debriefing, I, I thought you all sounded paranoid and... Insane. Yes. And yet... Within hours of arriving on this ship, what has to be a sabotage Romulan bomb has, was connected to our ship. It's... What ship did you come from, did you say? The Pinnacle. The Pinnacle. And what class is that? That is uh, an in Intrepid class ship. Um, quite a bit more uh, state-of-the-art, I must say, than the Mazu. And do you mind if I ask who assigned you to the Mazu? I am not sure. I, I put in my request with Starfleet, and they told me to go meet to report to Starbase 234 for my next assignment. How long ago was that? It was only a, a week ago. The assignment was a week ago? Sorry, I got the... Mm -hmm. Oh, when I... You're not here. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm asking her to repeat but because it's fine, I can it's hear fine. the thing. Just to clarify, did you put in the request a week ago? I put in the request a week ago. And they transferred you that quickly? Yes, I found it quite ex unexpected. Do you mind... If I ask if you're leaving the pinnacle was amicable? <sighs> Just to have maybe a perhaps better understanding of the um, expedited timeline with which you were transferred. To Starfleet, it was amicable. Mm. To the crew, perhaps not. Is there more you want me to ask? Of course. Um, as you noted, we sound very paranoid with cause. Uh, I would be concerned if you weren't at this point. <laughs> and uh, I'm certainly not intending to imply anything. But to have a member of senior staff and a Romulan mine arrive at a similar time. I do wonder if I wasn't purposely sent to your ship to ensure that you showed up on Starbase 2034. That is an interesting theory. I'm surprised myself they would assign me to such a ship after my previous experience. Was there something about your previous experience that relates to the Mazu? No, not at all. It, I have no ex experience with such a well-versed ship. 
<laughs> the first time she says this, you've never been on anything this so old. Yes. Do you mind your issues with your previous crew? Yes. Would your placement with the Mazu realize it's quite soon, but as you can see, it's been somewhat unorthodox. Would you say that that was an issue with your previous position? Or is this something potentially that they saw might remedy? I'm not sure if they sent me here to teach me a lesson. Is that what you, you mean? No, I'm... As much as you wish to divulge, I imagine you don't want to go into your issue with your, or presumably multiple mm -hmm. issues with your previous crew. But there was some corruption on my old ship. I thought it stemmed from one individual. But unfortunately, it was wider, wider than I expected. Some people were forced to leave Starfleet. Uh, well-liked people. Mm. Were you well-liked? No. Happens to the best of us. Mm -hmm. I prefer the ship to people. I can't blame you. Needless to say, some of the crew, all the crew was happy to see me leave, and so was I. Does that sentiment still hold? Well, I didn't get myself blown up today, so... You didn't get me blown up either. I, or the ship, or the captain. So, so it I'm was a, content for now. A reasonable day. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for your candor. Um, and Anytime. I imagine that it could go without stating, but um, if you could be perhaps the briefing that we had earlier. If you could remain high level in your logs and your communications about everything that was discussed, obviously follow protocol, but perhaps not go into any sort of great detail. I will do my best. Thank you for your, thank you. I feel good about that. I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay, Luna Port's captain on it. Um, I'm going to uh, draw up a document. <laughs> draw up a document, a report, a formal report, yeah. if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a message. <laughs> <sighs> me. You are the secret message. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um. Is the is there a secure channel I can respond through? I mean, you. Yes, this isn't a live communication. This is just a message. But if you want to open up a secure channel, you can do that. Okay, just I don't want. I'd like for her to be the only one who could read it. It's an encrypted. You can okay. encrypt the message. Sure. Okay. Um. Essentially, um. This location compromised, cannot comply. Current status, too valuable to risk. And then I give her uh, contact info of one of the people who helped me back on K7 with similar mm. operations. Okay. 
Anything else you want to do before we call it a night? Um, have you told us what Davis told you about the Mazu being targeted? Uh, I have not. Okay. Um, I also don't know if that's critical to do in this particular one, just given the fact that everyone's targeting us right now. <laughs> so I think that that can wait. We've had a really long day. Okay, I'll then for the next briefing. I am just going to send a message back to 234, mm -hmm. to Sean. Okay. Just a personal message uh, that just basically says, um, we were passing through so quickly, I didn't think it was worth dropping you a line um, before, but given that we um, seem to have picked up a... Uh, a mine at your station and had a bit of a close call there. I uh, mine. decided mine. I uh, just thought I'd um, I just wanted to say hi and um, say again that I'm glad you're back in my life however much you end up back in my life and I just send that off Right. Anybody else want to do anything? Um, is the captain in her quarters still? Where are you, Captain? Chilling in the quarters. Chilling in the quarters. Drinking um, whiskey. Drinking whiskey. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to go by and uh, uh, knock her. Boop, boop, beep. Whatever we need to do. I can tell who it is when they we'll knock, right? That. Oh, a real beep boop. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Real beep boop. I got real beep boops over here. Might have some more. Anyway. Uh, come in. Captain, mm. um, given uh, your recent uh, circumstances and the events of the day, um, the high stress environment, the pulse that you all were exposed to, I just wanted to run a quick uh, checkup scan to make sure that you and uh, the symbiont are still copacetic. It's very thoughtful. Yeah. Is alcohol going to throw off any of your sensor readings? Uh, um, it'll probably show up, but uh, I'll take it into account. Please. Um, run a just basic scan, just make sure yeah, everything is... Yeah, roll on that one. It's, she seems fine. Okay. And within normal okay. expectations. Okay, uh, Everything's... Uh, everything checks out. Um, I'd like to just periodically until some time has passed, just continue to keep an eye on things to make sure there's no possible regression or... Do you mean anybody affected by the pulse? Do you mean me after my traumatic You, attack? given I just... I mean, I know the symbiont is back and all of your past hosts have um, reawakened within it. Um, but just until... I feel that you're completely out of the woods, just to make sure. There's not like a daily thing or anything, just and you can come by of course, sick bay and yep. if I- Go ahead and set up a recurring appointment that okay. to take place in sick bay. I'm sure it doesn't have to take place in my quarters. Along the same, or at least similar lines, uh, today, um, the um, confrontation uh, we had, um, I don't think it applied at all today, and I'm not normally the most by the book, but I have been trying to study up a bit on Starfleet protocol, especially in regards to my role. Um, you asked me when I came back on board to make sure that my loyalty wasn't just to you, but to the ship and the crew, and I think that is absolutely paramount as well. If an occasion should arise where I feel you are perhaps compromised or unfit in some way by medical or mental circumstances, I wanted to reassure you that I wouldn't <laughs> take command myself, but I would not hesitate to relieve you of yours and place Newman in charge I if understand. I thought the ship and crew were at risk. That is part of what your job entails. Of course, I completely understand. Good. Um, I'll get you a recurring appointment on the books. 
Cheers. Well done today, Captain. Likewise. And I exit. Can you just give me threat? <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. Promise. Ooh. <laughs> That conversation could have gone a different way, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else want anything? I just mm -hmm. want to just pull up the new crew member's personal record, just whatever is I've already done readily it. available. <laughs> it's just a thing that I do now, apparently. Sure. Uh, you guys have that. Um, if that's an offline download thing that we can do, that's yeah, fine. It's an offline I'm download. just reading it like a novel. <laughs> just like, mm -hmm. Oh no, you have access to more though, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. It's a real and, uh, unabridged sure. edition. <laughs> and I will actually add that to your file as well. Fabulous. So you'll have that as well. You will have her you will have her full record. You'll have a limited and while I'm setting up that recurring appointment, I'd also like to go ahead and like, schedule. I'll go ahead and go my, my, uh, our, our, our little, you know, just sure. My just check on everybody. You're on board. Like I know what your basic vitals are, so that right. if anything varies, um, like I've done it with every. Like we established that I've done it with everybody on the crew so sure. far. So I just want to now that she's on. Sure. I got that blast. Deliver that blast. Scan diagnostics. Scan the triquarters. Uh, if nobody's got anything else, we're gonna call that one a day. Okay. Love it. And then we're going to be back uh, next time to find out what the heck's going on with Starbase 105. W.T. Heck. W.T. Heck. Did you guys come to any conclusions with all these meetings, or was it just a bunch of throwing around ideas? Um, I, think, I think there was some, I think there were some good ideas generated. A lot of, I mean, honestly, there was, I was looking for a lot of like, hey, that's crazy talk. Uh, and I got that. There you go. So I call that useful. I don't think there are any conclusions that we could have come to because we don't have no. enough information. Right. I think we just spoke about the spectrum of mm -hmm. different pos the spectrum of possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mostly For me, it was less to... useful about uh, figuring out any kind of answers or leads or anything, and kind of more taking an account of where everybody stands. Where everybody stands. Yeah, I wanted to know that. I wanted to make sure that everyone was on the same page about what we don't know, because. That's sort of, you know, let's make Everything. sure that everyone Everything. is looking for the right information yeah. if, it, right. if so we stumble across it. Yeah, if someone doesn't have the wrong information and making assumptions, which might lead us in the wrong yeah. direction. I think it's useful to have the discussion and then sort of pick apart all the pieces and go, that's an assumption you're making. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of what I was looking for. Cool. And you got all that. Yeah. I think okay. so. Cool. I'm asking because I need to know if I need to save time next week for more of that stuff. So I think no, no, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I think no, at this we point need, we need more practical want, stuff. Yeah, right. if you want to get us closer to like Jennifer Prescott, where we can get some answers, it'll That's okay. satisfy yeah. this. Oh, okay. That All right. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Next week you find Jennifer Prescott. She's right there on Next the ship. week, you seem to find <laughs> Jennifer Prescott. Like Jennifer Prescott. Next I mean, week, we find an empty runabout. So it turns out it's a changeling. Oh. What? And a bomb. Bump, bump. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say you were going to quit like coming up with ideas? It's <laughs> oh, God. You're going to stumble on some of his that he's already planned. Like, I'll he's write that down. Three he right, just making jokes. He made jokes and nailed oh. three major plot point surprises. <laughs> One of them was mine. <laughs> like, oh, is she your daughter? Yes. yes. Actually, yes. Good like, joke. I'm just over here doing bits. And no, your comments are total gossips. I uh, know, right? Yeah, I'm apparently even more so than that I thought. I heard that it's actually her daughter. <gasps> what uh, about her daughter? What were the other two? We'll go offline. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the other two were. Either. One of them was in that same episode, though. Yeah. No. There were two in that episode. And Lauren, I wanted this one to be kind of a easy intro to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, putting Thanks. on a suit and going on yeah. the side of a ship. I mean, <laughs> on a, yeah. You know, there weren't like three Romulan cruising. warbirds shooting at you. You just had to go out on the side oh, of a ship. Oh, those were the days. I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just super enjoying that like Andorians are supposed to be actually like calmer under pressure and Cindy not is not. not. <laughs> so I'm trying to decide whether that's just okay. me or whether that's the character. That's just this wacky Andorian character that you've got. <laughs> Uh, She's a misfit indoor. We're going to get out of here, y'all. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us for this episode. Next week, you're going to be back on Starbase 105, continuing the pursuit for Jennifer Prescott. Reminder, everybody, order a shirt. Order a shirt. Order them now. I got one. I'm going to look so cool. But, oh, yeah, and uh, get, get some of those if you want. Remember, if you sign up for the email list at uh, heroesofawesome.com, you get a coupon for 10% off those tokens at Strategic Dino.
So make sure you do that. And while you're there, go ahead and order one of these shirts until the 30th. They are 25% off. Only $18? What? For a baseball team? Nice. That's awesome. Really good price. They're so gorgeous. I think it's a tri-blend, too. Durable it is a tri-blend. That's right. Durable and soft tri-blend. Unisex effort. sizing? Unisex sizing. For Unisex everyone. sizing. Soft. So, stylish. To it. Wow. You can't pass this up. But we're going to get out of here. Yeah. Now. Everybody, thanks for playing. Uh, we will see you all next week. Same place, same time. I almost said Bat Channel, but I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Trek Channel? Same Trek Channel, same Trek time. time. <laughs> uh, remember, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Good night. Good night.